The opinions and views expressed in the following program are those of the speakers and the host and do not necessarily reflect those of Yokely Scott Corporation and your sports network. Yeah, I've been closer to Jesus before, so can you help me out? Can you help me out? Am I on my own? Am I on my own? Or can you help me out? Am I on my own? Am I on my own? Or can you help me out? Can you help me out? Welcome into a Thursday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. If you're in the market for a brand new or slightly used automobile, you owe it to yourself, you owe it to your wallet to check out the good folks at Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. They got a great sales department, service department, and their finance department uh, is spectacular. So, before you put pen to paper and sign the next four to seven years of your life away with car payments and whatnot, you certainly owe it to yourself to make a drive to Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town to Greg Greenwood's place. Greg Greenwood uh, owns Greenwood Chevrolet, and it is a phenomenal place to get a new or used automobile. Mr. Anthony. Someone moved my product placement cup, so I can't be Vanna White. Wow. Dang. Hang on a second. We'll, we'll fix this, right? <laughs> We're going to fix this. We're going to fix this right now. Right, what right. the do, heck? Do, do a Greenwood spiel. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Indeed. Greenwood Chevrolet. Father Val. Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Uh, scrappers uh, are on a three-game losing streak. They uh, they went into West by God, Virginia, and by God, they got their ass kicked for a second straight night. Uh, all of a sudden, the uh, Black Bears are playing some really good baseball. Uh, they're now seven and three with three ties. Yeah, I, I still am kind of looking at that, going, "What? What?" Uh, but it, yeah, you, you you play nine innings because uh, you don't want anybody getting uh, getting hurt or the bullpen getting uh, wasted or anything of that nature. And, and and look, I mean, this is we're it's abundantly apparent. This is a league that is all about trying to get as many of these kids. Uh, into the MLB draft as humanly possible, and uh, tell you what, the uh, Scrappers in starting the season six and zero, oh, they have gone three and five during their last eight games. Yeah, it's baseball, right? You're gonna yeah. have some ups and downs, and you got to get through them. And that's and it. Make the losing streaks as small as possible, and, and get out of the valley without without trying. You know, baseball is funny. You, you can't try to get yourself out of a swing yourself out of a slump or you know or or try too hard to get yourself out of you just gotta do the same thing you did when you were winning and, and trust the process and trust that you know numbers will average themselves out they get one game left with the black bears and then they go to frederick to take on the keys and boy this team wow zero wins 11 losses two ties uh not good yeah not not Maybe good strong. at all yeah, they're, the they're struggling bus. in a big, big way. They got way. the keys to the struggle bus, Yeah, and it's all there. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's not good, that's for sure. Uh, hopefully, uh, Mahoning Valley and the Scrappers will uh, get it going tonight, get their 10th victory of the season. I just like the fact that right now, through 14 games, they've not played a tie game yet. Right. So that's pretty cool. Uh, they're either getting beat up or they're beating people up. Exactly. So, not a lot of close games. You know, you look at the Scrappers' scores – it's either lopsided towards the scrappers or lopsided towards the other team. There yeah. haven't been a lot of three, two, five, four, seven. Yeah, last night was one of the rare exceptions where they had a, a, a tightly contested game against West Virginia, but unfortunately they were on the losing end of it. So, Of course, uh, my point was beat up by last night. Uh, well, yeah. Well, last night they did. Well, Black Bears are on a seven-game winning streak, by the way. So they're, they're playing some really, really good baseball for sure. Uh, final game of the series, you'll hear it on uh, YSNlive.com. 
And then uh, Mahoning Valley will scoot over to Frederick, Maryland, which is about an hour, hour or so outside of D.C., hour and change outside of Baltimore. Really nice town. Uh, and they'll take on the Keys uh, this weekend. Then uh, they take Monday off, and they come back home on Tuesday, Senior Citizens Night uh, at the ball yard as State College comes to town for a three-hander. They're home all week next week, right? Yeah. They have, a, they have a Father's Day package available on yep. their website for yep. Sunday. Three-game series with State College, and then uh, West by God, Virginia, comes into town uh, next weekend for a three-gamer. So we'll see what happens. And hopefully uh, we will get an opportunity and to see Colin Floyd make his home <laughs> debut for the Scrappers. Isn't that the fun thing about having a 16 league? It's like, hey... I just saw you. Yeah. Hey, you're coming back. Okay. Well, here's and we'll here's see you next week. <laughs> here's where it gets multiplied. This is an unbalanced schedule, so you're seeing an awful lot of West Virginia, an awful lot of State College, uh, and you'll occasionally see Williamsport, Trenton, and Frederick. I mean, for me, if just lower this to sixty games and play each have team they, twelve times. Have they played all the teams yet? No. Okay. No. So no we haven't been... seen Trenton yet. Okay. Yeah, and I don't think we've seen Williamsport yet. I don't yet. think so either. I think it's all been yeah. Fredericks it's, and State it's College. It's Frederick State College and West by God, Virginia. So, uh, so you got to think the schedule is back heavy with a lot of Trenton. and. and well, they and, only see Trenton one time in, in Mahoning so Valley and even, one time in Trenton. It's not even play the teams the same amount. Oh, of no, time no. Time. This un, it's an unbalanced schedule, which it's it, – it, it, look, sense. I mean, it, it, it just lower the season to 60 games – Play the other five teams, 12 games, have six games at home, six games on the road, easy peasy. Oh, wait. It, it's, this isn't, you know, it's not rocket How science. How many games are they playing right now? They're playing 64 right now. I mean, if you lower it to 60, it's not or that big of a deal. just make it one more 65. Well, that's, you can do that too. too. And then you go 13 games. But then someone gets... Someone gets one extra home game out of the deal, and I, I don't know how that would work. Home field advantage. I mean, home. F- yeah, it is field. Home field advantage. I was dying because someone was. Um, people are not happy that, that by the way, that, that OKC is the host of the World Series and that Oklahoma is consistently in it, and they get a big crowd because it's like thirty minutes away. Oh well. And I did some diving at like a home field advantage now. Is not what it really used to be. I mean, in, in any sport, because I, I was going off and trying to see how important having a crowd for you really, really is. And, you know, uh, the what, what, 2019, the the team that didn't have home field advantage won the World Series. Yeah. Because Washington went and won it in Houston. Yeah. 2016, uh, the team 17 that 17 and the, the, 17. Yeah. And even though Houston cheated, they still won in Los Angeles. Yeah. Uh, and then in 14, San Francisco won Game 7 in Kansas City. Yeah. So, you know, it's like... Uh, I think the only sport it really matters, or it did, was the and NBA. Then, and then I looked at uh, the NFL. It's like Kansas City is considered one of the biggest home field advantages because statistically they're the loudest stadium in the NFL. You know, that's not... You can't argue that. The decibels say here's the loudest stadium. Yeah. They... Uh, since uh, 2013, they've lost 27 games total since 2013. Half of those losses have been in Arrowhead. Well, I, So I, it's I, like they lose at home come, almost as much come as post they lose season. on the road. Come postseason, though, they rarely lose at Arrowhead. They, don't, they haven't played a lot at Arrowhead other, other than the last three years. Yeah. That's, that's, and uh, have they lost any of those games? Patriots beat them in the AFC yeah, Championship. There you go. Uh, it, it just, I think for me, the, the home field advantage, or the, in this case, in home NBA, court advantage for me, the NBA is the sport. Lakers had home, field, home court advantage. <laughs> Sun said... Well, the Lakers were also hurt. The Blazers had home court advantage. Yeah. And the – who beat the Blazers? The Nuggets. Nuggets yeah. said – Yeah. So it's yeah. like it's I, really it, not mattering as much as it used to. Yeah. Uh, I mean – And look, the the crowd is only an advantage if you let it be. And that that's where, that's where it all starts. Like I, I think that a crowd against you is only an advantage if you're – well, it's, a, it. it's 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 an advantage it, until it, you do something and the, the crowd same, shuts up. At the same time, the, the game's exactly the same. All you have to do is go out and execute. The crowd cannot influence you to throw a pitch down the middle or make an error or whatever it may be. Yeah, it's just you have to be mentally tough enough to go out and execute. And if you're at that level, you should be able to. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't play all of my games on the road when it mattered. I mean, I would want to have a home field mm-hmm. advantage, but it's not. It's not the be all end all. You still got to play. And I get why people. I mean, like, oh, they put thirteen thousand people in those stands last night. 
And I would say 12,500 of them were Oklahoma fans. Well, it, well, of course, drastically. Uh, of course, because it's I, in their home state, right? And but but OKC got the got the deal because they came up with the best marketing uh, plan for the NCAA. And there's no other softball field in the country that can even touch thirteen thousand capacity. Yeah, T- can't even touch it. Yeah, I mean, if you want to change so the, the venue, go well, build a stadium that's going to seat about 15,000. And then, yeah. then the NCAA is going to go, well, oh, OKC? Okay, who's OKC? Okay, uh, you know, they're going to be so like, they're, you know, they're going to be like the, the, the person that's all of a sudden interested in you because you've got money. It's going to be like that that that, uh, that meme where the, the guy and his girlfriend are walking. Yeah, and he's, and, and he's turning around and looking at the <laughs> other girl. Yeah. <laughs> the look on that girl's face that, that he's walking with is, is priceless. <laughs> so uh, some big news today at Mooney. Did you see the girls' soccer coach they hired? No. The creden- I mean, I, I don't know a lot about soccer, so this name didn't get a lot for me. But when I looked at what her, uh, what her like credentials are, I mean, okay, so Abby Golden is going to be the new – what a name, by the way. Uh, going to be the new Mooney soft, uh, soccer coach. I'm um, almost in softball, but so she played at North Olmsted High School, and she was an all-state player. There that's, you go. That's one notch. Okay. Uh, played Division One at Pacific. Okay. Two notches. Played in the WPSL. Okay. Three notches, and currently coaches a nationally recognized Cleveland FC team. Alrighty then. Um, this just in. <laughs> I'm going to make a bold prediction here. There's going to be a number of Cardinal Mooney girls that are suddenly going to be playing summer soccer in the Cleveland FC program. Just going to throw that I, out there. I mean, like that's that that's a home that's a home run hire. Ah, uh, absolutely. Um, and and uh, I assume she knew someone in the Mooney because you don't usually just bring someone with that kind of caliber of, and to say hey, you're going to coach this high school in, in Youngstown. I mean. Well, I don't even know at this point that she needed to know someone from the Mooney uh, uh, family. Not that way. I mean, like, Mooney needed her to know somebody to get her in the – you know what I'm saying? That's oh, yeah, like absolutely. One of those yeah. No, uh, I, absolutely. Uh, dang. What a hire. Yeah, that's not too shabby. We'll see what, uh, we'll see what Mooney's soccer team is and all their about. their soccer team is a good program. Yeah, well, it's about to get it's better. It's about to get better. <laughs> yeah, it's about to get a whole lot better. Uh, th- that'll be fun. I saw where uh, East Palestine has uh, hired their new um, head basketball coach. They made that coach. official? Yes, they made okay. it official on Monday night uh, at the uh, East Palestine uh, board meeting. Uh, the Youngstown East baseball coach. Jason Ray. Jason Ray uh, has resigned from uh, Youngstown East as their baseball coach because he has taken over uh, the East Palestine basketball program. I, we'll see. Uh, there's a, a lot of uh, a, a lot of interesting kids that are going to be freshmen this year. Uh, we'll see if they stay in East Palestine. I have been saying this for about a year or so. Um, Columbiana County, up until a couple of years ago, really wasn't uh, what's the word? Not tempted, affected very much by the parochial schools because i mean warren jfk is up in trumbull county you're certainly not going to send a kid from columbiana county all the way up to warren jfk that doesn't make any sense a couple of kids have taken advantage of of going from columbiana county to cardinal mooney or columbiana county to ursland but there is a basketball program it's not a parochial school but it is a christian school heartland christian is that school where they're starting to become a basketball remember, factory. It used to be the opposite because it used to be you'd go to a Heartland Christian middle school game and you'd see talent, 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 yep. talent, talent. And they're and keeping sudden, that talent. And all of a sudden that talent would go to Columbia and it would yeah. go to Crestview. Would yep. go to, now all of a sudden it's, Now they're keeping that talent. It's, it's oh these these team, these guys are playing in in uh in high school at Heartland and Heartland is actually getting some people to move out of other schools and come to Hartland. That, that's where I'm coming from with that. <laughs> Hartland Christian is now, uh, you know, in a spot in the basketball program where the folks in Columbiana County are now going to see what the folks in Trumbull and Mahoning County have been looking at for years and years and years, which, hey, look, God bless. Uh, it's, it's all about 
see what you did there. I, I, pun intended, <laughs> by the way. Uh, it, it's all about making sure that if you get your kids a, uh, and you can sell the religious education uh, where you, you have the ability to put that factor into the school system where you can't necessarily do that in the public school system. But let's be honest, if Heartland Christian continues playing really, really good basketball, and spoiler alert, they are, uh, they'll be getting some of those kids, and we'll be interested to see what happens. But yeah, that's a yeah, that's a hell of a program. Um, but with East Palestine, yeah, bit... again, there's there's kids coming up. I, look, I, I coached the seventh graders who are now going to be freshmen a couple of years ago. Palestine had a couple of really good kids on their seventh grade team. Played yeah, played against them a couple of times. Uh, they had some eighth graders uh, that just completed their freshman year last year that were pretty decent. It's not that he doesn't have any talent. It's that culture the last couple of years has taken a brutal shot. And if he can get these kids to rally around bringing a culture back, Palestine could be uh, could be on the road to uh, – to, 500 and better and a lot quicker than what people think. It takes a certain attitude to coach at a place like East Palestine. I think Jason Ray is the like, perfect. Oh, he's perfect I mean, for he's it. He's going to go in there and he's going to you know, understand yeah. that it's going to take work and it's going to, you know, you you have to really build the trust with, with that program and, and um, he's going to be the one that kind of goes into that gym. He might stay late. He's going to put in the time that, that it's required. You know, he's not going to go in Brighton Bushytown. This is going to be awesome. We're going to win thirty games all the time. No, 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 no. No, no. you're gonna you're gonna start and you're gonna build and you're gonna work and and, and we're gonna take a YSN uh, tagline. It's gonna have to be brick by brick, and you're yeah. gonna have to really build the culture of that program, kind of like we saw Latonia start to build a winning culture brick by brick. Because a couple of years ago, they were in the same boat that East Palestine is now. Sure. It's just a culture problem. Yeah, it, it was. was. It was a. Play not to lose instead of play to win. And, and I, uh, I fear that if Letonia has uh, a breakthrough year in, in 2021, 2022, people are not going to recognize the job Dan Dennis did in the three years that he was at, or two years that he was the, at Letonia. The people that matter will, will know. I, I would uh, hope so. Uh, you know, you don't go from, uh, what, two wins to, to five wins to eight wins. Uh, steadily building the program up. It, it's uh, and and we'll see what happens over there. I mean, like I said, the the kids that I coached the, the two years ago are going to be freshmen, and I know of at least three of them that can go and play varsity basketball like that if they are ready and and have lost their you know dropped dropped an attitude and and started gaining some work ethic, which I think all of those kids are now and, starting to do. But there's, Anthony, there's three kids that I can speak of right now that can immediately make that program better. And so. the, the one thing we saw from East Palestine last year in the basketball program on the girls' side, they will they will celebrate like crazy even the little the smallest of success. Oh, absolutely. Which is good for a pro. You, you have to celebrate everything. Every success has to be celebrated when you're in a program like, you know, trying to rebuild. Um, and, and we talked about that with, with their girls' program. They won the league for the first time in in uh, program history. It was this year. But, you know, they got a police escort. They got everything. They got all the bells and whistles because you have to celebrate every win. You have to celebrate every positive moment as if, you know, you, you, you did something great because you did. Jason's the perfect guy for this because I, I umpired a couple of Youngstown East games. Uh, first of all, the, the the fact that this guy was able to get the the, the East High Golden Bears to play above 500 in baseball uh, is a is is an unbelievable achievement in and of itself. Uh, and the way he was able to get these kids to buy into the team concept and buy into and this is the step, the caliber of of uh, baseball that we're going to play. This is how we're going to get to this uh, to this moment. He's going to do the same thing at East Palestine. This is this is a rebuild that's going to take some time, but I can see Jason going in there and saying, "All right, this is how we're going to do it. Everybody needs to get on board with this." And if the kids get on board, it's not going to happen and overnight. But look out if this if these kids get on board. And all the great coaches of basketball in the area have the same kind of they. 
let the kids know they care before they let the kids know what they know. And and the kids aren't going to trust what you know until they trust that you care about them. Yep. Because basketball, other than maybe football and maybe wrestling, in practices and in preparation, you are asking the most out of your kids in basketball physically because you're running them like crazy. You're, you're, you're making them do drills. You're making them do box-out drills where they're you know beating each other up a little bit. Sure. So maybe other than maybe football and probably wrestling, the practices in basketball, you're going to be asking of your kids a lot physically, and they have to buy into that if they're going to do it. Speaking of, here comes the new head basketball hey. coach of the East Palestine Bulldogs, the one and only Jason Ray. Coach, congratulations on getting the East Palestine basketball job. Uh, I, I'm, I'm happy for you, my brother. Thank you, man. I, I appreciate I appreciate everything that YS, YSN does for uh, me uh, over the last couple of years. It's a pleasure to be a part of the YSN team and to, and to call in today and to be a part of now the, of the East Palestine community. Uh, I was able to go to the street fair uh, last week with DJ and his family and, and, and my little family. And uh, so to me, it's a, it's a dream come true. I'm from Toronto, Ohio. So to go down to do a uh, to a smaller town and, and be able to do this, uh, I, I'm, I'm really thrilled. Uh, it, means, it means the world to me, my friend. And we talked about how we, me and Ron both agree that you're kind of the perfect person to kind of build a culture. And, and that's what East Palestine needs. They need a culture. Uh, talk about what, what some of the things that you'll implement to try to not just to build – you know, uh, wins and losses, but but build a winning culture in that East Palestine program. Well, it's funny you should say the word build uh, because last night Yvonne and I, so I date, uh, we went down to the, the high school and we put together my office last night and uh, across it just says build, build, build. You know, see, you know the road to success is always under construction. Uh, so we need to reconstruct, reignite, uh, and we're going to get this thing going. So I think there needs to be a renewed sense of toughness, uh, some accountability, uh, and, and if we can instill that in our players, uh, and my staff can, can instill that in our players, we're going to be fine. We understand the road that's ahead of us. I understand it. Uh, the job starts and stops, starts with me at the top, uh, and I'm going to make uh, that sound as proud of me as I can. Uh, I'm, I'm appreciative that I'm coming back in. I'm going to be able to, to teach in the district. Uh, so I'm going to immerse myself in the culture. And I think once the kids see that myself, myself and my staff, uh, is immersed in the culture, just like YSN is, is immersed in the East Palestine community. I think that's going to that's gonna help. We need some stability, and I'm there to stay. Coach, you've been talking about your staff. Have you already hired the uh, the folks that you want to help you with this program? No comment at this time. I'm talking to a couple guys tonight uh, after open gym. Uh, so that that's still in process. There's there's somebody that that's coming with me. So we're you know we're we're thinking. But again, I, that all goes to the superintendent, the principal, and I know my place in the food chain. Um, and we'll, we'll go from there. And they've kind of given me some free reign here. Um, so I'm excited to, to get on board here and get the kids in in tonight at five o'clock. I had a meeting with them last week. Uh, we're gonna have open gym tonight, grades seven through twelve at the high school from five to seven. Uh, and I had, I believe, 38 to I told, told DJ 38 to 40 kids at the meeting. So the interest is up. Uh, some new bloods in the program, uh, and I, I, I'm excited. And I'm excited to get going. I, I think you can tell my excitement. And everybody's behind me. The community's in behind me. And I'm and I'm ready to get I'm ready to get going. Okay, so we can't get names, which is totally fine. We get it. But when you're building a staff and you're building the people that are going to support you. What kind of attributes do, is there, are important to you when you're looking at the people that you want by your side? What are the most important things for a staff from your perspective? Good leadership qualities, um, the knowledge of the game, uh, and most importantly, good role models. I think that's important. You, these kids need not just kids of Palestine, but anywhere, whether it's Youngstown East or East Palestine or, or Toronto or anywhere. The kids need good role models. And I think if we can do that in – and, and we can establish that if I want surround if I can surround myself with good people and we're gonna and everybody then 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 once again uh, then the community starts to get behind us and there's a real there's a lot of really good people in the East Palestine community so that's my main goal when I when I'm looking to hire a staff here uh, is, is surround myself with with good role models and good people and good character guys. Jason Ray, the new head basketball coach at East Palestine, joining us on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. Two years ago, when your kids, who are soon to be freshmen, were seventh graders, I coached against them when I was at Letonia. Coach, you got some good kids coming up. Uh, they play the game hard. They play the game right. Uh, but I'm curious about something. Obviously, the game is is great on the high school level, but the game 
and the culture starts kindergarten uh, and and all the way through sixth grade. What kind of K through six program are you envisioning at East Palestine to uh, to get the excitement level started really really early? Well, I've already said that if it's not broke, don't fix it. And our fifth and sixth grade program and our youth program is in really good hands with Matt Werner. He is. I've talked to him. We've we, we've we've talked on the phone at length. Uh, he runs that program, but he also knows his place uh, in the chain. Like with me being a head basketball coach, uh, he's going to take his his stuff from me, put so I can put my two cents in. You know, so I just think you know I'm a big you know if you look at Steubenville Big Red and their success with their football program, their Pee Wee leagues run Reno's stuff in third grade. So when it just when they get to ninth grade, when they get to Reno and the high school staff, they already know his offense, his defense, and that's what that's what I would like to do and, and, and get some continuity between the K. The, you know, the, whether the first grade program or through all, all the way up to the seniors, we need some continuity uh, of what of what I'm going to run offensively and defensively, uh, and plus just in, in teaching the game. I want guys that are gonna be able to teach the game at that level. I don't care if you win or lose at that level. I just want to have I, w- I want excitement, and I want them to be able to learn the game. That way, when we get to them, uh, that was the problem I ran into at East uh, because if you think about it, there was no youth program. There still was no youth program at all at East High School. For, ba- for baseball, there's no little league in the city of Youngstown. So when I even when I went, met with uh, the, the mayor when he was there at one of the ball games, I said he didn't, he didn't realize there's no youth program. So what I did at East and, and the kids were amazing was nothing short of a miracle uh, because what, what the kids did because they picked up a baseball. Some of them as when I took it three four years ago and we had to teach them how to throw a baseball their freshman year. Then we end up in a, at a 500 season their senior year. So that's what I need. So I need these fifth graders to really learn the game that way they can get to me as a freshman and when they get to me as a freshman then they are they they know my system they know they know the zone that i run and the principles that i run off that zone uh in my defense uh and then we'll, we'll go from there but uh, the youth program and, and east Palestine youth league uh is in very 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 good hands I, i'm not worried about that absolutely whatsoever talk about the east palestine community i mean you've mentioned how excited you are to get immersed in it and we saw them, I mean, they celebrate every th- success, no matter how you know small it may seem to everyone else. Um, every success that a team has, they celebrate it. Uh, talk about that and how important it is to keep that up and to, to you know, celebrate every win, celebrate everything positive that happens in, in the program. Yeah, I, 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 think that, I think you hit on it. I think I don't even need to, I don't need to, that. You just made a great answer with, with your question. Everything positive. Everything's got to stay positive. There's no negative. There's no negative that can be in there. Uh, obviously, negative things happen. Uh, the, the town is starved for a winner. I understand that. And as long as the town gives me a little bit of patience, a little bit of grace, which I'm sure they will, uh, we're going to be fine. Everybody's positive. It's a brand new start. It's a brand new everything. I think they know what I brought to the table at Youngstown East, and I turned that program around. I guarantee I can turn this program around with a little bit of grace, a little bit of patience, some positivity. People get behind me. People and not even get behind me. Get behind the program because we're all part of one. Everybody in that town wears East Palestine Bulldog shirts, just like you wear Toronto Red Knight shirts or Lisbon Blue Devils shirts or South Range, whatever it is. Everybody, I want everybody to be a part of this culture. This has got to be a culture. This has got to be a total transition shift for the entire community and get behind these kids. And you get to uh, take on uh, some really good rivals uh, in, in the EOAC. You've got Lisbon, you've got Letonia, Columbiana, United, Southern. Uh, you make a trip back to Youngstown to, uh, to play Youngstown Christian, and we can't forget about uh, Southern and Wellsville as well. I mean, it's a fun league. Uh, what do you know about the EOAC, Coach? Well, Coach Hawks does a great job at Lisbon. Coach Johnson does a great job. At, uh, at Columbiana, uh, even the girls' program over there with, with Coach Chrisman. So I know a lot of it. It'll be nice. Uh, Buggy Thompson is one of is one of my best friends in the world at Wellsville. Buggy and I have been in constant communication through this whole process. Uh, so I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to getting back into the grind at, in Columbiana County. It is a transition uh, for me. It's kind of where I got my start. I'm excited. We actually are playing, and it was exciting. We are actually playing Edison, where my dad was the former principal, and he was the old Stanton High School. You would remember that. Uh, you've been around a long time, Ron. <laughs> oh, good, <laughs> so good Lord. Uh, let, let me tell you something. Uh, Stanton, <laughs> I think people in Letonia, our football team is is now outlawed or was outlawed back then. You remember Stanton used to have the swimming pool? 
Yep, I, 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 t- I trained. I learned how to swim in that pool, Ron. Okay, our, our football team beat Stanton, and the football team decided to jump in, cleats and everything, into the swimming pool. Let's just yep. say their superintendent was a little ir- irritated with the Leetonia well, program. Well, my dad, I remember that, remember that story. My dad was the principal of the high school at the time. I was the ball boy. I remember that time. That Yeah, so we get to play Edison this year in what's great in the Todd Calagota Classic in Toronto in my hometown. Todd passed away a few, a few years back with a coach in Toronto. Um, so I get to go and, and bring my team to my hometown to honor him in the Calabota Showcase over Christmas. This this couldn't have played out any better for me, Ron, and I'm, I'm so excited to play Edison. Um, we get in, in, in an EOC to go back down to Southern and, and that, in that old school gym, and uh, it, it, it's fun. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Valley Christian, obviously, Dolph does, does a tremendous job there. Uh, I, I know them very well, and what they bring to the table, everything that uh, you know, they're good. Uh, we open with Badger, and we op- we open on the road with Badger and Matthews, uh, our home opener. Uh, right off the rip, I got the Struthers Wildcats coming to East Palestine, my home opener. So I got my work cut out for me. Good God, Coach! I mean that that's a uh, that's a heavyweight schedule uh, for the first three games. Yeah, Badger, Ma- yeah, I believe it's Badger, uh, Matthews, and then Struthers. First two on the road, and then then it, then it does lighten up a little bit. Um, we, but you know that, that. But when you're 0 22, nothing's really you know light. Uh, you, we we do we're going to do the things the right way, and we're going to bring this thing along. And it starts tonight, uh, and I can't wait to get down there. So I, so I went down last night with Yvonne, and we and we and we got some things done. The office is all done. We're excited to be there. We're excited to be in the community. We went to the street fair. We're really excited to do all this. Um, and I just hope that the town, I want to put a product out and I want the kids to put a product out uh, that the town can be proud of. And I'm excited to be, I'm excited to be here to me. It's a, it's a dream job. And before uh, you let me go here, whatever, I do want to say thank you. Thank you so much uh, to my players at Youngstown East High School. My players at Youngstown East High School gave me everything for four years. They gave me everything they could possibly give me. And, and because they gave me everything they could possibly give me, it's probably why I have this job opportunity right now. If they don't buy into my system and buy into what I'm doing, I'm probably not talking to you right now, fellas. Uh, so I want to pre- I want to send my kudos out to my uh, my kids at Youngstown East. We had a 100% graduation rate, including the valedictorian of the class this year. So the system works if you buy in. Um, does it have to be tweaked a little bit? Probably, yeah, absolutely, to your personnel. I understand it. But the core values are going to stay the same. So I really want to say thank you to Youngstown East, the Golden Bears, and the Golden Bears community. Talked to a lot of them this morning before I resigned. Uh, I resigned this morning, and uh, it, was, it, it was an easy – obviously, because it's tough. I could have actually probably stayed as a baseball coach, but Michael Rome, who is a Lisbon guy, is going to stay on the staff. Uh, who was on my staff? He was. He will continue as the, as, as the head baseball coach at Youngstown East and continue the tr- tradition there that we've built um, and continue on that. Uh, so I'm very thank you to the, to the community members at, at Youngstown City, uh, guys that came. Uh, and DJ will tell you, DJ Yokely, uh, Dr. Raymond Duffett, Warmby Sports, all, Mayor Tito Brown, all those guys. Dana, Dana Bausch and WFMJ is phenomenal. I just talked to Anthony, I talked to Dana a little bit ago. All these guys are classic. Classic, get our classy individuals, uh, including yourself, who uh, talked to me. You know, when, when we umpired or whatever together. Uh, but thank you to everybody in the Youngstown East community uh, for what I was able to accomplish in the last four years. I'm totally humbled, and, I, and I'm totally indebted to them. I love that you brought up that you talked to them before you, you know, officially resigned. And you had that conversation with them because a lot of, co- well, not a lot of coaches, but some coaches might not make that decision and might get, might uh, avoid that hard conversation. How important was it to you to have that conversation with the kids that you coached for four years and to be able to share that moment with them and to be able to tell them face-to-face that, you know, that, that you weren't going to be there next year? Well, the, the key with – and I'll be honest with you again, I'm all about honest with you. The key, the key, the key with that is with the Youngstown, we're all, every Youngstown was all spread around. You know, the kids were all spread around us. So we had a, we had a conversation via the group chat. Uh, on our text messages, we had a group chat. We had we had a talk. Uh, the one thing about this, if I was going to go, it's a good time to go. I had ten seniors. I had thirteen kids, and ten of them were seniors. So I had so I did talk to the three kids individually that were coming back. Um, and then with, and it was kind of difficult to not because I didn't have their, they haven't been in school in two years. Uh, so that's why Romy's got a, got his work cut out for him to get into the schools uh, and get some of these younger kids into the, into the junior high. Um, so, and I know that Kevin Kyler, who's very, very close to me, the old base of the basketball coach at, at East, 
Uh, he's going to be on them uh, to get in the program. Uh, but to have that conversation with those, with those couple underclassmen was difficult. They understood. They gave me their, their stamp of approval. Uh, the same thing with uh, the seniors. They were all very excited for me. A couple of them played in the All-Star game the other day. Uh, one of my players was playing in, in, in the YSN All-Star game this Sunday. Uh, so to, to do this last ride with them, they were very appreciative. I, it was great to talk to them. They, they, I didn't want them to see it on the news. I didn't want them to see it on YSN. I didn't want them to see them on any, any news station until they knew that I was considering uh, the, taking this job. And, but until, and, and they had an idea, but until the board approved, uh, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't want to say anything because um, that I, I want to give the, the respect to the superintendent at, uh, at, and the principal and the AD at Palestine as well as the school board, uh, and I appreciate their vote of confidence. Now that it's out there, um, we're, we're excited to get going tonight. Coach, I couldn't be happier for you, and I, I'll tell you, the, you're the perfect hire for this position. And I, like I said before, you got a pretty decent freshman class to work with and a bunch of kids that are hungry as hell because uh, I know o, uh, the, uh, the Ofer uh, did not sit well for any of those kids uh, last year. Uh, you've got some hungry kids at Palestine ready to, ready to have some fun. Thank you. I appreciate. I appreciate again. Uh, and if you guys just join us, you know we are five to seven tonight. I'm also going to add an open gym starting next week. We're going to go double sessions on Thursdays and a morning session on Friday. That way, if anybody does play baseball on Thursday night, they can come to open gym on Friday morning. So that's how I'm going to do this. <laughs> uh, so no, there's no excuses. Uh, well, I have baseball. I have this. Which I'm, and I will tell everybody right now. I, I'm a big proponent. Everybody plays every sport. It's a small town. I will never just say you play one sport. I don't. I don't like that. Everybody's for everybody. We all wear the same jersey. We're all from the same town. Uh, and I and I can't wait uh, to get going. Uh, last night was so exciting to get the office ready. Uh, I'm really excited just to, to look. I took a, I took a moment last night with Yvonne and and took a breath and looked around because I said, well, it'll never be this quiet in this gym again ever. And uh, starting tomorrow night, and we kind of got a laugh out of it. But I, I enjoyed the moment last night, which sometimes I don't do uh, over the years. And I've, I enjoyed the moment. I enjoyed the conversation with you guys today. I'm all business starting tonight, so thank you very much. And I appreciate why I said And I can't. And I still can't wait to be the voice of the Steel Valley uh, this 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 fall, these for Friday nights in football. Uh, doing doing Steel Valley football for YSN as a play-by-play guy uh, with my new play by with my new color guy Kevin Kyler. Uh, I'm I'm thrilled and, and thank you to YSN. Uh, I'll be around the office. I appreciate it. Hey, congratulations and uh, look forward to seeing your team play and, and take it easy on my alma mater. Okay. Absolutely. Thanks, sir. <laughs> All right. See you, Jason Ray, the new head basketball coach at East Palestine High School. Uh, he's he's got an interesting group of kids and and like i said uh the the ofer last year did not sit well with uh, with those kids they're going to be hungry and they're going to be wanting to play some basketball and he's the perfect guy for this job that's 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 a great hire by palestine yeah and i think the fact that he said he had about 35 to 40 people in his initial meeting says a lot about how many people want to kind of avenge last year and in try to bring some pride back to that program and, and not just kids that are coming back, but some new blood in their program too. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's not too shabby at all. Um, you, get, uh, you get a good junior high program. And the thing I really liked about what Coach said, um, we're going to have kids in fifth and sixth grade run my offense and run right. my defense because, look, there's no sense of doing something that's not on the docket on the top program. Uh, it should be everyone from JV to to varsity to JV. If you have a freshman team to freshman to junior high to uh, elementary, you're going to be running the exact same offense, the exact same defense. Uh, maybe you'll have a couple of uh, a smaller scaled version of it and then uh, add a couple of things as the kids move up. Uh, but it's going to be in some way, shape, or form the, the same caliber of offense and the same caliber of defense. People are going to be scouting the fifth grade team. This is what defense they run. Yeah. I'm telling yeah. you, I'm telling yeah. you, five years from now we'll see uh, this. Uh, there you go. That's all right. <laughs> I mean, uh, there's uh, – I, I like that idea. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, I mean, you don't want your junior high coach or your fifth and sixth grade coach to start running things completely different. I mean, I, I'm a firm believer in repetition. Uh, and if you have one style of offense uh, that you want to have as your base offense, it, it makes sense if you're doing, if you've been doing it from fifth grade, by the time you get into high school, 
you have a pretty good idea of what this base offense is all about. Now, let's be honest, in a, in a school the size of Palestine or all of the schools in the EOAC, you're not going to say, this is what we're going to do every single year uh, because every once in a while you might have a kid 6'8", six, 6'9", six, or you might have a kid that runs like a gazelle up and down the floor and you got to kind of tweak things a little bit. That's all right. Well, runs like a gazelle. Yeah, it runs like a gazelle, you know. Uh, but I, I'm That's curious. Thing. I mean, um, and, and every coach knows this. It, when you're there for a while, you have to be able to bend your philosophy to your personnel a little bit. And, and Jason's going to be able to do that really well, too, because we've seen him do it with East. You know, you, you couldn't build a, a great baseball program without being able to see what your strengths are and, and you know, adjust accordingly. And, and that's why they got to 500 this year. Yeah. They, they weren't a bad uh, baseball team. It was a, that was a fun team to watch. Uh, and I was blown away by the fact that some of the freshmen – didn't know how to play baseball, let alone throw a baseball. Uh, so now you even th- you even hear that, and you're like, "Good Lord, how were you able to finish 500 uh, after a fourth year?" Because it's you know it, it, it's a pretty if you haven't thrown a baseball, uh, and oh by the way, we're we're going to start doing this in high school. Well, that's a late start. That's a that's an awfully late start. So, uh, but it's a good hire. Uh, Coach Ray will do a real nice job uh, at East Palestine, and we'll we'll see what happens down the road. We're gonna talk to him a lot more frequently when when basketball season. Gets oh my closer. lord, yes, yeah. The EOAC is gonna be so much fun to watch. Uh, I think so. I think um, United is the, the wild card in that, in that league. United could be fun to watch. They they lose a couple of kids, but uh, they. Yeah. They have some underclassmen that are coming back. Valley is always Valley right will be there. fun. Yeah, Valley will uh, be fun. Bug Thompson has Bug. a ridiculous freshman class coming in Which to Wells. Which is scary because they were already good last year. Yeah, uh, he has a crazy good class coming in uh, from from Wellsville uh, for their freshman year. Uh, Letonia, uh, we'll see. Uh, they lost uh, a couple of a couple of really nice pieces. Um, Again, uh, it all depends on the, the incoming freshmen. As I mentioned, there's three kids right off the bat that can play varsity ball this year uh, if they put their minds to it. Uh, it's, we'll see what happens. Um, Letonia's basketball program has potential. The other part of it is, uh, is how is the new coach going to get some of the kids that didn't play basketball uh, the last couple of years? Are they going to get those kids that didn't play basketball the last couple of years? We'll see. That's big. When you can get a kid that maybe stepped away from the program while he was a freshman or a sophomore, yeah, and you get him to come back for his senior year or whatever, and you sell, hey, it's your senior year. Let's go out with a bang. You know, yeah. let's help. Let's help build something special. Yeah. And they buy that and they come in. That's big, not only for adding another player, but it's it's adding numbers to your program. Lisbon and, will be fun to watch. They always are. Uh, Coach Hux, Huxhold will uh, will have a loaded program. Lisbon can shoot the lights out. Yeah. Lisbon's got an incoming freshman that uh, he's big. Big, he's, tall, big, and big, wide, big. He's big. Uh, he's, uh, I, I'm sure he's probably 6'4 right now because uh, he was a good, and I'm not lying when I say this, he was a good 6'1 in seventh grade. And we ridiculous. we had the Dickens of a time trying to guard him. So I how do you come come tournament time? <laughs> oh, I got you. Yeah, come tournament time. I put my two be- two biggest kids, one in front of him, one behind him, and the rest of the kids played a triangle defense and said, "I dare you to shoot a three. We wound up beating them by twenty five points in the tournament because that because their big kid hardly had the ball at all. Uh, when we called the so dogs you're, off, you're, then he scored the points. Your your big kids must have been formidable because uh, if, they they played. If, you're, if your bigger kids are still like five eight, he's gonna be sitting there like. Well, check, yeah, they they kind of were, but they you know, but they were tough, hard nosed kids. So, um, I had some good rebounders, even though they were outsized. Just, I had some good rebounders on my team. in there, catch it. Oh, oh I know. It's that's cute. Yeah. Oh, oh isn't that just lovely? <laughs> Someone's trying to guard you. Yeah, yeah oh, exactly. That's oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this kid. This kid's enormous. Uh, he. Uh, I can only imagine if he gets two growth spurts like six nine playing at Lisbon. Oh Lord. 
shut the whole county of Lisbon down because it's over. If wow. you have, if you have a six nine player, <laughs> yeah. Well, the other thing is the Sifki everyone kid. Everyone else is like six foot and six foot. They're trying to guard him. Yeah, the, the Sifki kid is is a, a machine from three point range as well, and you know, hopefully his uh, knee injury that he suffered uh, his freshman year. Hopefully that doesn't um, that doesn't shortchange him. Uh, on the field, whether it be football or basketball, because this kid can play. Holy cripes, can this kid play? So yeah. uh, um, Lisbon's a, Lisbon's going to be really Lisbon's fun be to really watch. Fun. Yeah, they're going to be fun to watch. I don't know if they can win a district championship, but um, they're they're in the conversation next year. There's no question. Yeah, and that Division Four. Yeah. It's going to be a lot more murky because McDonald's not going to be what they were. They're still going to be really good. Oh, well, McDonald will be fun they're to gonna watch. They're going to be really, really yeah. good. But they're not going to be the, oh my gosh, undefeated yeah. up until JFK. And, and Bristol and, and Badger are and, always fun to and watch. And JFK, JFK will be. Some pieces too. Yeah, but JFK. So it's is, a lot more murky in that Division 4. Yeah, JFK will be okay. They're, by the way, have you seen their new floor yet? Oh, they're, they're finally gonna yeah, they, play they, home. they put the floor down. Oh my goodness, is this nice? Yeah, so that, that that's uh, I'll be I'll be happy to see them play games up in uh, up in their home floor again. So um, money well spent. They did a nice job with the floor, but they, they're going to be fun to watch. Who has a really cool floor that I'm excited to maybe get a peek at because there'll probably be a YSN school is Garfield. Oh. Dirtsville Garfield's facilities, period. Um, man. That, that, that gray floor? Yeah. Woo. You you talk about a program that's going to fit right in with the, um, with the uh, MVAC. MVAC gray. Uh, they're immediately. It's a great <laughs> Well, listen, they're immediately the best football program for 2021. Or if they're not, they're going to be, they're, they're a serious contender for that league title. Uh, I think Crestview will be fun to watch, but they lost a lot of kids, and we'll see how many of the young kids can uh, can fill fill I some think spots. The wild card in that league in football. Not saying that they're going to be like okay, they're going to win all this stuff, but Liberty and Camel were both talented but young. Liberty's going to be fun to watch. Talented but yeah. young, and they, yeah. uh, every time they made a mistake, it was because okay, that's a young mistake. Yeah, you know, it's a freshman mistake, especially Camel. Campbell had pure athletes that were just young and inexperienced. Yeah. Liberty's going to be fun. Campbell's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I mean, up and down. Brookfield, you know, they're, they bring it every Brookfield's year. Brookfield's that, like, here's my, uh, my lunch pail. We're going to work. Yeah. Hard hat. Yeah. We're going to beat you senseless yeah. with the run I, game. I don't know what champion is going to bring to the table football-wise this year. Well, hopefully their program's still on the rise because it yeah. was one of the, one of the better um, seasons they've had. Since the 90s this year, unfortunately, COVID stopped them from being in the playoffs. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Uh, but they still had, I think, seven wins. Yes. Um, yeah, which... one of them One of them was against Crestview. Uh, and they, you know, I think, what was it, the end of the 2019 season, Crestview and Brookfield cost them an opportunity yep. to go to the playoffs, and they said, we will get our revenge. Well, they they did. didn't get it on Brookfield, uh, but they did get the revenge opening night against Crestview. So, uh, in a monsoon. In a mo- oh god, was that? But a- it was one of the only games that didn't get delayed because of lightning. Yeah, it wasn't. There was one. no lightning, but it was raining sideways the whole night. Week one was full of delays. Yeah. And light- I mean, we were here for the audible call until like yeah. eleven o'clock doing games because every game except that one was delayed because. Like, yeah, I mean, it poured. Uh, it, and and everyone knows that's a natural grass. Oh, yeah. One of now, uh, go figure. Natural grass is now the minority. <laughs> Uh, in the area, because there's more teams now that have uh, that have signed Mineral on Ridge. with turf. Put down there Mineral Ridge and Letonia are both going to turf. Ooh, Ridge's turf looks slick. Oh, I know. The orange and black at yeah. end zones. Yeah. Ooh. I haven't gone to Letonia yet to see their uh, to see the turf, but I've been told that it looks crazy good. So I, you're too late, as far as I'm concerned. But that's all right. That the the, uh, the kids will uh, the kids will enjoy playing on it, and and look, let's be honest. Um, I know people don't want to you know don't want to spend a, a crap load of money for a product, but if you add up all of the all of the uh, the time that people do uh, mowing the grass, lining the the grass, and uh, 
all the abuse that the grass takes during the course of the year, it adds up to you're saving money if by by going and getting turf. And now you have a place where your soccer team can play yep. if you have soccer. Absolutely. Uh, your softball team can practice in the fall. Absolutely. Uh, baseball team can practice in the fall. Every outdoor sport benefits from the fact that you have a turf field. Not to mention the fact that the band uh, yeah. can now play on on the turf and not chew up the grass right. with their uh, with the marching. Uh, so you know, it just it works, uh, and I and I, I I love the fact that that a lot of schools are coming to the realization, hey, we spend money up front, but this is going to last for about ten to fifteen years, so the money that we're spending up front, we're saving that and then some, with all of the wear and tear that you'd get on grass and all of the uh, you you got to pay someone to mow the mow the football field. Uh, and line turf. the field. You know, you can't mow, you don't mow turf. And so, you know, and the line, you don't line the turf. It's, 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 there. it's there. So, you know, I mean, it just, it makes sense. It, it, it definitely makes sense. And, and plus it's going to look really, really nice. Now, hopefully, and I don't know this to be true, but hopefully Letonia got uh, an all weather track uh, around the, uh, the stadium as well. I, I don't know that to be true or not. Uh, and I don't even know if Mineral Ridge got that. Uh, I, I do know when Gerard got their um, turf facility, they also got the all-weather track. Oh, my Lord. Did, uh, that was when I first moved back into the Valley, which was about eight years, nine, eight, nine years ago. Um, I lived on East Howard, maybe 500 yards, if that, from the, from the football field. So I would walk because you're, everyone in Gerard would use that uh, to walk. I, I would walk the track every morning, uh, and and just you know go about four or five laps around the track and uh, and be done with it. Oh Lord, well that that facility is just gorgeous, it's absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, and it, it kind of, it's nowadays it's kind of coming with the turf. Like oh we'll just do a all weather track too. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if Ridge and Latonia both got the track too. Uh, it would be nice. Uh, it, it would Preston definitely be nice. The track with their turf, right? Yes. Yeah, and it looks good. I, be, it, it, it looks really good. It'll be Crestview's. They didn't have that turf for their football season last year. They did. They did. Yes. Least, so it will be this will be the season. second season with the turf uh, at Crestview. Uh, and look, Crestview has been known. Well, I mean, Ethan Powell and, and William Hardenbrook, who who uh, have graduated, had great track seasons by the way. Absolutely, they did. Uh, Jack Rabbits on the turf. I mean. It was night and day watching Ethan Powell and William Hardenbrook either catch passes from Anthony uh, Anthony Cusick or or get a handoff and watch them just explode uh, past the line of scrimmage mention, second level and go boom on the turf. Not to mention the addition of Jansen's in the backfield. Too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, uh, that, that was a, that was a dangerous running back yeah. slash yeah. Slash wing wing receiver cord that Crestview had. Yeah, and and Crestview's got to replace That's why those they kids. went to the regional semis. It's the regional semis, yeah. Um, so it was it was a fun year. Now they got to replace those kids, but the good thing for them, they got their quarterback for for their for his senior year, and they got a lot of their offensive linemen and a kid that I think is going to explode on the scene. Jack Yerke is a really good looking athlete over at Crestview. We have a track program like Crestview does. Yep. Running backs are kind of a dime a dime. Hey, you can run. Let's go. Yeah. You know, um, I expect them to have just as much speed. Oh, they always I, have speed. They'll they'll have plenty of speed, especially remember, on that turf. Um, remember Dylan Huff? Yeah. How fast that kid was? Yep. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. And then back in the day with the Hill, you know, Corey Hill and and uh, Carter Hill, and they've always had a lot of speed on that team. That won't change. Oh yeah. Could you imagine what that team would have been like had they put the turf down, I don't know, five, ten years Ima- earlier? Yeah, imagine if the, the – because Crestview had like a five-year run where they were like the top dog. Yeah. They were beating South Range every year. I mean, they were the top dog. Yeah, that's true. Football. Yeah. If they had turf back then, <laughs> It would have been interesting to see. Would have been real so let's interesting see, in the, to in see. The NBAC, Brookfield still has grass. Yes. Champion still has grass. Yes. Campbell has turf. Liberty has turf. Crestview yes. has turf. Um, Garfield has grass. Garfield has grass. So that's six. Labray has. has it, are they are they moving to turf? 
Let's just call them grass now. I don't yeah. I, 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 the last I saw, they were grass. I don't know if LeBray has has uh, has decided to do the uh, the turf monster yet. Who am I missing in the, um, in, the in the grades here? Hang on a second. Le, Liberty, LeBray, Brookfield, Camel, Camel, yeah. Crestview, Garfield, Garfield. Who are we missing? We already said champion. Yeah. Who the heck are we missing? Are Newton we Falls. Oh. Yeah, Newton Falls. Duh. Which they. I think they're on grass. Have grass. Yeah. So you're looking at three turf fields, five grass fields. All right. Not bad. Yeah, not bad. EOAC, uh, Letonia's got turf. Palestine has turf. Wellsville has turf. Southern has turf. United has grass. grass. Uh, EP has EP turf, has right? turf. New turf. And, Columbiana has grass. And um, Columbiana has grass. Yeah. Youngstown uh, Valley Christian has has turf because they play at Camel. Right. Uh, so five turf and three grass. United, Columbiana, and uh, uh, Lisbon have grass. And the other five have uh, have turf. So... The, the only problem with having turf, you better have a grass practice field. Then you go to the... When you, when you play the game on grass, when you have to go, like now Letonia, hopefully you have a... Uh, and I'm, I'm pretty sure they, they do have the facility that is grass, where you would use that exclusively the week before or the week that they're playing Lisbon, United, or Columbiana, if and they're I playing think, in those three facilities. I think everyone in the NE8 has turf. Pretty sure they do. Niles, Gerard, South Range, Poland, Lakeview, Jefferson. Hubbard. Hubbard. Struthers. Struthers. Yeah, they, they all, all have turf. turf. Yeah. Boardman has turf. Fitch has turf. Harding has turf. Canfield has turf. Uh, East and Cheney do not because they play at Ray and Stadium. Mooney has turf. Ursland has turf. Oof. Like I said, turf has now become the majority right. for the uh, for the high school programs, and especially you know, when you start doing up in the rock. Ten years ago, you could count on one hand the amount of teams in the area that had turf. That's that's how crazy uh, the, uh, the the turf has has become in the area. So the great turf revolution, indeed. Some somewhere in the afterworld, John Lennon is writing a song, "Turf Revolution." So you sing, "You want a revolution? <laughs> Get better footing. <laughs> we all want to see some speed." Oh Lord. Okay, we're gonna take a timeout. Uh, we're going from turf to a shortage of <laughs> officials because, well, let's be honest, the turf is wonderful, but if you don't have officials. Uh, ain't you ain't playing. Uh, John Mang, who is the head guru of officials in the Mahoning Valley, uh, we have a serious problem on our hands. Uh, we have a shortage of officials, and we've had a shortage of officials for a number of years in all of the sports. Uh, John Mang has some, uh, hopefully, some uh, classes where people can become officials, and it's it's not a bad gig to have. We'll get John on in just a couple of minutes. It's a Thursday edition of Running Point on YSNlive.com. At Greenwood Chevrolet, we go the extra mile for you. By finding you the right vehicle at the right price. And by being with you for every mile of your journey. Visit GreenwoodChevrolet.com and tell us how we can go the extra mile for you. New things happen all day. Some are good, some not so good. In today's complicated world, while you're busy working, playing, and living life, we're busy helping you make sense of the day's news. And there's only one place where it comes together with clarity, context, and accountability. It's 21 News at 6 with me, Madison Tromler, and Derek Steyer. 21 News at 6. It's what the day's news really means to you. Welcome home to a home made homey with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. Inspiration starts at BairdBrothers.com and is turned into reality when high-quality hardwoods are delivered right to your home. Baird Brothers has the latest design trends, shiplap and skinny lap interior siding, antique oak rustic flooring, and, well, you'll find them all at BairdBrothers.com. Ordered easily, delivered conveniently, enjoyed comfortably. BairdBrothers.com. 
WRS Wealth Advisors, the area's premier wealth and retirement specialists, located on South Avenue in Boardman. Hi, this is Jim Myers with Myers Family Insurance, your local Medicare and retirement resource. We're excited to have sports back. Whether you're on the field or cheering from the stands, sports unifies communities and brings hope for the future. We're all one team working together. At Myers Family Insurance, we know the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. Hi, I'm Colin Chupa. And I'm Kelsey Clem from K-Squared Marketing. Our boutique marketing firm specializes in media planning and buying, public relations, event marketing strategies, and strategic sponsorships. We can integrate our services with your existing game plan, or we can be your entire marketing team. Your goals, our game plan. Let's, Let's win, win together. together. Call K-Squared Marketing at 330-623-2730 or visit ksquared.marketing to learn more. At Hubbard Chevrolet, Hubbard can help you get the financing you need regardless of your situation. I'm Tony Pache, and I've helped thousands of customers in Northeast Ohio and Western Pennsylvania buy a vehicle. Bad credit, no credit, no problem. I can get you approved for a low interest loan and maybe even a low payment lease on a new car at the number one Chevy dealership in Trumbull County for three years in a row. Visit HubbardChevy.com to get pre-approved or come see me, Tony Page, to get a new vehicle today. Remember, folks, Hubbard can help. Welcome back to a Thursday edition of Running Point. Ron Potesta with you alongside Anthony Hardwig. We're going to talk about uh, officiating now, when people sit back and go, oh, you're going to talk about officiating, oh, you're going to critique them? No, we don't do that. We are going to talk about something rather serious, though, uh, and that is a shortage of officials in all sports in the Mahoning Valley. And to talk a little bit about that, we bring in the guy in charge of officiating for the Mahoning Valley, uh, or at least in Mahoning and Trumbull counties, John Mang Sr. John, how are you today, sir? Uh, I'm doing very well, Ron. Thanks for having me on. Well, uh, thank you for uh, for coming on. You know, a few years ago, I had you on terrestrial radio when I was doing my show um, over in Boardman, and we were talking about the fact that there is a problem in terms of a shortage of officiating in all sports. And I, I'd like to think that it's gotten better, but, John, I'm afraid that it's gotten worse. Am I correct in this? Uh, you definitely are, and it's not just a, a local thing, but a statewide issue also. All right, so uh, which sport in particular is on the hot seat in terms of of really, really low uh, officials in this area? Well, I would have to think, uh, and I don't assign, although I'm involved in it, but I don't assign track. Track is very uh, fragile right now with volleyball, and I would have to say that uh, – there's never enough basketball officials. So really, if you take your pick, I mean, you can go down a line, but those are probably the most crucial. But uh, wrestling officials is another one. But uh, basketball and football are right up there with the rest of them. Uh, baseball and softball always have been uh, a challenge because of the uh, uh, amount of money it takes to get started in baseball and softball. But uh, – We've kind of helped that. We've nipped that in the butt a little bit uh, as far as uh, some of the leagues in the area, which I will talk about in a second here if you give me the time. But uh, uh, all sports are overall, like you wanted me to single out, but uh, the ones I've just mentioned, there's really not a sport out there that we can say we're comfortable with the amount of officials we have. And I imagine that this school year has been really tough because there are probably a handful or even more officials that – didn't really feel comfortable officiating with the with the COVID restrictions in place and everything. Uh, now that that's dying down a little bit, do you think uh, we'll see a little bit more come back to the fray and help out a little bit uh, in this school year? Well, I was going over my notes uh, from last year, of course, if you remember, the pandemic uh, took out, completely wiped out spring sports. Uh, we never got a game in. We had a tentative schedule, and we kind of shuffled it until the, we're going to start the regular season at the end of April or first part of May, if you remember. And then they just wiped out everything because of the uh, COVID-19 problems that we were having with uh, quarantine and everything else. So all spring sports were wiped out. But I would have to say, uh, uh, starting with the school year for 2020, 
uh, with the uh, football and the volleyball and everything, uh, probably had about 20 to 25 percent of all officials opt out not to officiate because of the pandemic, maybe because not of their uh, health issues, but they didn't want to bring something home to their family if they were out and uh, picked up the uh, virus or whatever. So I lost about 20, 25 percent. And when you're talking um, each sport, uh, again, an example like you're talking, maybe uh, I think I have about 375 uh, basketball officials because I do go, I have 43 schools from uh, Walsall all the way up to uh, Jefferson, but the amount of officials, but you, you start talking 30%, you're talking, uh, well, if I had 300 officials, that'd be 90 officials. So they're out for the year. And then I had a number of officials that were quarantined for periods of time. And you're talking, if you remember, it was uh, like from 10 days to two weeks, uh, quarantines. Uh, it was just a hassle, uh, for, uh, not just for the officials, but for everybody involved. But uh, my hats off, uh, hats off to every official. I mean, uh, there's always, uh, if you go to a game, you might hear a comment, no matter what sport it is, oh, that official's out there just for the money. He doesn't, he's not really caring about the sport. Well, I'll tell you what, this is just a, uh, a true testament on how the officials in our area, and not just our area, but the state and probably the, also, also the country, but it was for the love of the game because we had a lot of officials that uh, did a lot of games, probably more than usual because of the amount of uh, shortages we had, but I'm very proud to say, though, that of all the games uh, or all the schools that I uh, assigned for, we did not have one game canceled because of lack of officials or officials not showing up or JV officials not going and varsity are there or whatever the case may be. And and also I heard some more stories because we had a lot of our schools that traveled to other areas to do a basketball game. There were no officials there a few times and, and – uh, there were some issues, but the dedication and the communications was just excellent. But uh, as far as the officials themselves, uh, now I don't really know. I can give you a little taste of it. Last year, uh, with no spring sports, when I, I'm the secretary of our uh, baseball and softball association here in the area for Mahoney County, and I can speak for uh, Trumbull County, too. Uh, Tom Barzak helped me out and also John Babalik down in Columbiana County. It's like a network, but uh, I would have to say I lost probably 20 to 30 officials out of 140. So that, that takes the cut into you. And really the class this year, I had uh, five softball, and I think I had two baseball. <coughs> Excuse me, that doesn't make up for what I've lost, but we're trying in other areas uh, in Trumbull. Uh, uh, as far as officials, there's classes there too, but the numbers just aren't there, but I think what's really helped, and I'm very proud to say I'm the, uh, matter of fact, I have one more meeting uh, with our superintendents from the uh, Mahoney Valley Athletic Conference, and they, they, they bought in uh, last year when uh, uh, the uh, seven schools from the AAC came in and we combined to make the MVAC a, uh, actually it's a 16-team uh, league. Now we added uh, Garfield for one of our divisions. So we're a very solid 16 school league. And they bought in and said, John, what can we do to promote or help uh, uh, with the officiating issues we have? And, and uh, they came up with a two year program uh, that I went in and actually did some research uh, in uh, Stark County and Akron area and the Cleveland area and come back with numbers of what the officials were getting paid in these areas and came up with a very, very healthy uh package that uh, when I went and uh, promoted it, because this was for every sport, every level, uh, there were increases for the officials, and uh, it did nothing but help. It promoted the sports. Uh, I can see the officials, uh, the other, the older officials, I, I think that they've they got this sense of pride in them now that they know that they are not just taken for granted, but they are uh, being compensated for uh, doing the job that they do, and by having the uh, experienced officials with new officials coming in. It, it's just a very good uh, blend where it's helping. I have picked up on basketball officiating and uh, football officials. Uh, I was talking to Tony Tarantino, who is a instructor for football for a number of years in Mahoney County, and he projects to have about 15 officials taking the course. And all these things just add up to uh, uh, a positive. You would never have enough officials. We're always asking 
Ron, you got on board about two or three years ago, and uh, you found out that uh, uh, the road to uh, uh, officiating high school sports uh, by getting on a field and uh, doing everything right. I mean, right now you're going to you're, you're getting into some varsity level ball yourself, and you've been a, an asset now. Uh, although you were when you became a, an official, we were doing JV ball, but you can tell just been the last three years, uh, just because of uh, game fees and everything. I think it's, it makes you feel like you don't mind maybe traveling that extra ten miles if I ask you to go someplace out of your area uh, to cover a game. So. It all works out. It's all good stuff. But I can't wait for next week. We have our last superintendent meeting with the MVAC, and I want to shake each one of their hands because of the direction and uh, just just everything they've done this past year, uh, uh, going above everything as far as this COVID and state regulations and mandates from the county and uh, uh, the governor's office being involved. And it's unbelievable. And, and we got through a, a, a school year that was – very, very trying on everyone, and I can actually tell uh, the 16 athletic directors and the principals, and I think everybody deserves a uh, somehow to take some kind of a break this summer and uh, try to re- uh, rejuvenate or whatever you want to say and, and get back into it for getting ready for another school year because they just never stop. But uh, you can tell that I'm a, a big uh, fan of uh, the MVAC and then the OVAC with uh, Howard uh, Friend. Uh, they've taken the same road as far as the uh, uh, game fees and rates for the officials and that, and uh, and everything has worked out very well in their league. Uh, so I can't say enough about uh, all the superintendents, and I'm also involved with the Northeast State and the AAC, and just all great people, and they were under the same issues and restrictions and athletic directors. I don't, I, if I don't have another Zoom meeting, Ron, for the next two years, I'd be happy. That's all I did this past year was Zoom meeting, Zoom meeting, Zoom meeting. And thank God we had it because it was a good uh, way of communication. But uh, uh, the things that we got done and, and, and for the good of the kids where they were actually able to play, and I think that's the most important thing. Um, we still have a lot of great – you know, every community has great parents, and everybody's concerned about their, their student athletes and calls I got about – how can we do this? How can we do that? And uh, the things we did get done and all these championships that we had and watching kids uh, participate this spring in spring sports, uh, playing uh, football championships, and everything everything that happens, it's because of all these school administrators that we've had uh, right down the road as far as the supers and the uh, principals and the ADs. And let's not forget one other part of this uh, mix, the coaches. I can say the whole year, and I do a lot of assigning, I can say I never had one call from a coach saying any issues that we have. And usually we do over a play situation that everybody was so involved with this COVID and making sure their kids were playing every week and being safe. The, the, the last thing they were worried about was uh, the officiating, although uh, we do great officials and crews and all that good stuff. But, uh, that was in the back burner. So my hat, uh, somehow, it's in June now, and it, it's just about behind us. And poor JFK, they're still trying to get their state championship run right in here, and I wish them the best. But as far as the weather and everything that we've had and everything we went through, Ronnie, uh, it, it was a, a heck of a ride, I, I can tell you that. Uh, I know I got off base a little bit, but I, I, when I sit back and think of everything that we did accomplish, uh, it's just unbelievable. So. All right, John, b- before we let you go, and obviously uh, you're, you're busy with a lot of stuff, but, you know, I- I've, I've often said uh, everyone can look at an arbitrary number for officials and say, oh, that, that, that's a lot of officials. Why are you guys, why do you guys complain about uh, shortage of officials? I'll use football for an example. Not only are you playing varsity football, there's JV football. There's also junior high football. And then uh, you have uh, uh, programs uh, – uh, pre junior high, all of those uh, all of those games need officials. So, uh, yeah, you if you have an arbitrary number, but you're using all of those people to do multiple events, it gets it gets real tiring after a while for uh, for those guys. And you'll see guys that are varsity uh, ready. All of a sudden, they have to be used in uh, junior high because we don't have junior high officials. 
You're 100 percent right, and I tell you what, uh, my theory is, and it's worked out pretty well, is I never put two new officials on a game together. That would be like throwing fire, uh, gas on a fire. But I have a lot of uh, experienced officials that have been taking lower level uh, games and all sports just to work with uh, newer officials, and it's worked out very well. We have mentoring systems that, like you just said, uh, we have mentoring systems with officials going out and critiquing and all the good stuff. And every association that I'm involved with in every sport, they have uh, things set up in place where, and this is not for hearsay or to put a, a name on a piece of paper. These, these uh, officials go out and work with young officials and, if an official doesn't make it, there's only one person they got to blame is the one that they look at and see it in a mirror because everything that uh, is done now is for the good of trying to keep officials. To retain them is the hardest thing. To get an official is the easiest, but to keep them, that's the big thing because you lose about 50% of your officials after two years. That's the state stat. And uh, But now I think with all these mentoring programs and that, we're, we're maintaining who we have. So... Uh, Hats off to everybody that's involved with uh, high school sports, for sure. John, if someone wants to uh, get involved in, uh, let's say, uh, well, football, baseball, volleyball, any sport, uh, where would they start in terms of wanting to uh, become an official? Well, first of all, I tell you, a very good question. And it used to be a seasonal thing where I always told that when I got calls here at the house, I would say, about six weeks before the season would start, that's when usually the class would start. So if you're talking football, we're saying football starts the first, second week of August. You're talking July 1st or so. But now it's a year-round deal. Uh, you would go on to a website, ohsa.org, and look for officials, and you click that on and just follow through looking for classes or instructors. And uh, I've had a number of calls here now for – football and volleyball right now and, and I'm sure there'll be other uh, sports involved but right now that's the two sports that are coming up for the fall but it's nice now because instructors could have classes for basketball in June if they want or if, if they take that off the USSA says you could have classes for any sport at any time uh, but you just have to go online and set it up and that's probably the biggest thing is you, you have to have officials that can get onto a computer and get onto the website. Everything is done with the Ohio High School Athletic Association. Uh, the, the class fees are on there. You would pay with a MasterCard or whatever. All that stuff is taken care of online. And then all your classes. Unfortunately, last year, a lot of our classes were uh, Zoom meeting classes. Very few were person-to-person because of the COVID. But now we're going back to the classes. I know that uh, uh, the volleyball and the football classes will be kicking in here very shortly. And they've all set sites for them to, uh, uh, so uh, they can attend and that. And what it is, is it's, it's 25 hours of instruction, <clears throat> which seems like a lot, but it's not. And uh, you take a class or you take a, a test online and you could retake it if you had to. You have a lot of people helping you, supporting you on that. Uh, that's just a part of it. You work scrimmages. We have people coming in and showing you what uh, equipment that you need or whatever. Uh, to help you. Uh, most of the associations are, are uh, taking off the local association dues and make it less uh, costly to try to help officials. All these things help, but the biggest thing is if you know an official and you want to get into it, call them and let them help you or call me. You know, Ron, 24-7, you can call me, and that's the first thing I would do is help anybody that wants to get involved. And uh, anybody that's doing any kind of uh, uh Sandlot or uh, midget football or something, and they think that they would like to continue their careers, do it. Get involved with high school. It's a wonderful experience. It's great. What's the biggest advice you give to new officials that are kind of starting their path or, or doing their first year of officiating? The advice I would give them is every game is a learning situation. Uh, the biggest thing is if anybody makes a remark, they are not referring to you as a person or are attacking your your uniform the OHSA in a high school uh, have great uh, regulations where for fans and, and for coaches you don't you really don't, there's very little that goes through high school stuff that uh, it doesn't happen it, 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 it's good because there's always uh, the coaches have uh, things that could happen if they would 
get ejected, which we have very few. Uh, players do get ejected, and, and once again, sports is something that teaches you about accountability. But as far as a new official, uh, don't let it overwhelm you. You just go out there and you do a job, and really, after a, a couple weeks, it will slow down if you get three or four games under your belt, no matter what you're doing, and it slows down. And honestly, the second year of your officiating career is so much better than your first because you learn where some of these schools are at. You're not you're just not being overwhelmed, but there's nothing there that uh, takes away from the satisfaction of walking out of a gym or, or a, a baseball field or a football stadium and saying that you officiated a game and, and uh, you're part of a, a great, great, great organization, uh, the official, official community. That's wonderful. Well, one thing I would also add, John, is uh, for those that think they know everything about the uh, favorite sports, uh, trust me, you don't. Uh, one of the reasons why you would want to take this class to be an official uh, is just the knowledge that you're going to get. I, I thought being in in baseball, having all the years that I spent in a broadcast booth, well, this is going to be easy as all get out. No, it, it, there are things about baseball, the intricacies and the rules of the baseball uh, game that I frankly did not have knowledge of uh, before I started taking these classes. So uh, it's it, that's the other thing that I would uh, say. If you're going to take these classes, uh, be serious and and just soak in the knowledge that you're about to receive. And, and really, Ronnie, what you're just saying is 100% right. And I would like just to say that there's not an age where you can start. Uh, there's not a certain age. Like right now, I would say if I, if I had a son that was uh, a freshman in high school, and let's say, he, you know, I mean, a lot of kids play every sport. Some don't play any sports. That's fine. Or some just play one or two. But if uh, you like sports, it's not a bad idea to get into it. A sophomore, a, a freshman sophomore can do freshman games or sophomore games or JV games uh, in every sport. And uh, you make a few bucks doing it. And plus you're gaining that knowledge. And by the time you're a senior in high school, you, you've uh, – you have to be out of high school and over 18 to get your uh, class one rating or class two. There's three ratings. A three is a student. A two is a person that just takes the course. And uh, after their second year, they can take the uh, – uh, and they actually waive that because of COVID. You can take it after your first year to become a class one official. But uh, the, the chances of uh, advancement are really there. Uh, and uh, I would have to say if I was – had uh, children in high school, uh, women, uh, volleyball, or, or any sport they want to do, base, any sport, or, or men or anything, uh, I would get involved in when they're young. Uh, and uh, it's surprising. I have some father sons that are doing ball now, and they, they work together. And uh, it's just they just uh, get better every every time they step on a court or a field or whatever. And it's just something to think about. But do it. And if you need any information, Ron, I hope you would post my name or send my name. I have a phone number or email address or something. I can get it out there. You know, but uh, we do the best we could with that. Uh, if they would go to OHSA.org and look under instructors or <coughs> uh, secretaries or uh, my name's on there quite a bit, given when my age. But uh, I don't too many titles that I haven't had. So any place you see my name, if there's any questions or anything, give me a call. John, John, always a pleasure, sir. All right, Ron, you take care, and uh, you have a great summer, and looking forward to seeing you down the road. Amen. All right, John Mang Sr., he is uh, he's, he's very much involved uh, with the football, basketball, uh, and he's definitely involved with the Mahoning County Umpires Association as well. Uh, look, it, it's, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, the classes do cost some money. Uh, but it's money well spent. Now, baseball, it, it gets into a, a couple hundred dollars because you have to purchase the shin guards and the chest protector and the mask and uh, the, the pants and the shirts. And, you know, it, it does get into a, a, a little bit of money. Uh, but football and <laughs> basketball, you know, the uniforms. But, you know, the classes, uh, they're, they're relatively easy. And you get some great instructors as well. Uh, go to OHSAA.org, click on officials, and you will see the uh, classes that begin in our area. Uh, it's 
Football classes are going to be starting pretty soon. Uh, basketball classes will be starting. Uh, volleyball classes. Uh, it's 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 very worthwhile. I've always wanted to be a volleyball line judge. It's been, the ones that get into it are are, are hilarious because they have the flags that that and they they'll be like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, yeah. If you're not going to get into it, then you know you I, got I, to the ones that are just like, I'm like, oh come on. No, you got to get yeah, into that. Like a little spin move. And, yeah. That's it. You got to do the Bruce or, Lee nunchuck thing. It's like, <laughs> and I, I I would be there making the sound effects too because I I wouldn't be able to help myself. Yeah. I'd be like. <laughs> 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 My officiating partners would hate me so fast. Yeah. Ah, it's... It, Anthony, what are you doing over there? Twirling the flag? Yeah, twirling the flag. Right. Come on. I'm, it, these aren't nunchucks. I'm, I get it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm watching. I'm, yeah, I'm focusing. <laughs> focusing. I'm a black belt and flag waving here. <laughs> I Listen, I got a couple of friends of mine that have uh, taken the football courses. Uh Again, you think that you know all I, about the, the game. Trust me when I tell you, you go to a class, you're going to get humbled pretty quickly. I would 100% mess up one of the hand signals one time. I'd like say holding and do this instead of hold or whatever, you know. Yeah. Like, what, there's what, a lot of different What the hell is this? No, 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 it's, Pers- it's, personal it's foul. The, <laughs> it's, it's, it's holding. Or I'd point the wrong way. Yeah. On the deep. Yeah, uh, on the defense. <laughs> yeah, uh, shake your head. Oh man! Remember offsides on everybody. Yeah. Everybody moved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, illegal motion. Uh, the, the entire offensive the entire line. It's a- <laughs> Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. This is what illegal man downfield. Uh, ineligible man downfield. Yeah. So, yeah. See, I might actually know more than I thought. Yeah, and look, the the thing that I, I love listening to. Um, folks that start yelling and screaming about basketball on the three second call everyone just assumes that's a big one everyone just assumes well he's been in there for over three seconds okay do you realize a little tidbit here if a ball is shot and it goes off the rim you have to start the three seconds all over again just like a shot clock just like a shot clock uh so a guy could be planted in there for about seven seconds and there's a chance that he might not get a three-second call, depending on whether, how many shots were put up. So, a and little tidbit there. Here's another thing. There's a lot that referees are focusing on, and three seconds in the key is probably not high on the list. Yeah. No. That's why you don't see a lot of calls, because they're watching to see if this guy gets fouled. If you know, I mean, Then they also have to keep three seconds in their mind and see where they're in, out of the key. It's, yeah. Not easy. Uh, there is, then, uh, there's a reason why see, we now have three officials in basketball. This is why I would be so petty, because as soon as I heard that, I'd never call a three-second call. Oh, yeah. Just despite the move. Yeah. Uh, that, see, that's where, um, you uh, know. I'd be so it, petty. It, if, someone, if someone barks about a, a strike zone, <laughs> you, could, you could sit back and turn around and go, do you want me to make it bigger when you come up? <laughs> <laughs> just you wait. Just, just you yeah. wait. I mean, we can make it bigger when you come up if you if you want me to. Uh, yeah, that's code for shut your mouth. <laughs> Ball in the river. Let's try. Oh Lord, uh, it just you know. I mean, I think that everyone should take those classes, especially fans that love to shoot their mouth off uh, at at officials. During uh, during high school events, which again I got no problems with. I mean, it just keep it clean. Uh, you know, I mean the the, uh, the the my favorite thing is, hey ref, uh, your cell phone. Uh, you you look for your cell phone. You've missed four calls. Yeah, okay, good. That's that's a good get. It's getting old. It's getting a little old, but uh, you know it's it's a good get. Uh, but you know, I mean, as long as you keep it clean, I got no problems with uh, fans heckling the uh, the officials. It's part of the game, but. When you sit back and go, what are you blind? Uh, no, read a rule book and maybe you'll find out that the guy was actually right on this. I particular. love it when the coaches like they'll have a rule book and they'll pull it out and they'll be like, "Here's the rule right here." Yeah, that's just yeah, that's the ultimate pettiness. Oh uh, yeah, it's just. Uh, but you know, I, again, if you take a class, I guarantee you, you're going to find out that there are some things that you might not know about uh, that that you're like, oh. 
So that's why this was never called something. when I barked at an official uh, at, at all these games. Something that Disney taught me, there's actually no rule that says a dog can't play basketball. Yeah. Air Bud. Yeah, Air Bud. Air Bud it's reference. an Air Bud reference. There you go. And, and he was there's, good at it. He was good at it. He there's, was, yeah, hey, there's they no looked rule. at the rule book. There was actually no rule. There was no so rule. I mean, so <laughs> thought Bud's allowed to play basketball, and he was pretty good at it. So there you go. All right, uh, 330. reference for the day. Indeed. 330-886-0813, the MPV vote, heating and air conditioning hotline. Open for business. We'll take a timeout. It's AC in here. Yeah, well, you know, we don't have any of that right now, unfortunately. We'll take a timeout. Be back with more on this Thursday edition of Running Points on YSNlive.com. Every customer has a story, and at Greenwood Chevrolet, we are committed to making sure it ends with you in the right vehicle. I get to be part of somebody's adventure, whether it's buying a car for the first time, helping them get approved, or finding the perfect car for their budget. I'm proud that people trust me with their finances. They trust me to take care of them, and they trust me with their story. I'm Tracy, and I'm ready to go the extra mile for you only at Greenwood Chevrolet. Quality, customer service, and integrity. Those are the four words that have driven our success since 1957 at Joe Dickey Electric. Joe Dickey Electric is one Mahoning Valley landmark business that stays current with the requirements of our customers. Family owned and managed, we are an electrical contractor and energy solutions provider. Every member of our team adds to his or her skill set through ongoing training. Residential, commercial, industrial, automotive, and more. We keep ahead of the needs of our customers with a fleet of more than 50 vehicles and 24 7 emergency service, so you're never left in the dark. Jimmy Sutman here, director of Isle, Purple Cat, and Golden String. We are happy to support YSN and two of my favorite people, Scotty Mincher and Super Dave O'Malley. We are an agency that provides services for adults with disabilities. We infuse humor, passion, and joy into their lives. If you know of any folks with disabilities that need our assistance, please contact us. Your teams work hard and give it all they've got. Well, so does ours. Because 21 Sports and YSN give you extra effort when covering local sports. 21 Sports and YSN, winning coverage of our Valley's teams. When looking for home design inspiration, don't just be inspired, be Baird inspired. Whether new or remodeling, Baird Brothers has the latest trends like shiplap to refresh your home. Go from inspiration to installation with our wide selection of in-stock American hardwoods. From the rustic charm of antique oak to the warmth of traditional cherry, Baird Brothers has what you need to make your home inspiring. Baird Brothers, our family's heritage, your family's home. Hello, I'm Greg Burbick with G. Burbick Farms. For the last 100 years, my family has farmed in the Columbiana and Mahoning counties. I began raising cattle in 1996 with the goal of providing a better product for you and your family on the dinner table. Our grass-fed and grain-supplemented black Angus beef were raised with no hormones, steroids, or antibiotics. We are known for our hometown-friendly service and incredible tasting products. We are locally owned and have customers across the tri-state area. Our products go from our farm to your family. Stop by our farm on New Buffalo Road or visit us on the web at gburbickfarms.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. G. Burbick Farms, it just tastes better. This is Tommy Clem, owner of WRS Insurance Solutions. WRS Insurance Solutions is a local, independent agency that specializes in life, Medicare, long-term care, and disability products. Call us at 330-953-3722 or visit us at wrsinsurancesolutions.com to learn more. Good luck to all the student-athletes in the Valley. 
If you're looking for a quality pre-owned vehicle, why shop anywhere else but Tri-State Ford? Choose from our great selection of pre-owned vehicles. Plus, we've got you covered with our exclusive Tri-State Ford Advantage. It includes a 10-year, 200,000-mile warranty with your pre-owned vehicle and much more. Come see why so many customers from the Tri-State area buy their pre-owned vehicle at Tri-State Ford. Customer focus, community driven. Tri-State Ford East Liverpool or visit TriStateFord.net. Welcome back to a Thursday edition of Running Point on YSNLive.com. Ron Potesta with you alongside Anthony Hartwig. Uh, many thanks to John Mang, Coach Ray uh, uh, calling in, the new head basketball coach at East Palestine. John Mang calling in uh, at 1 o'clock to talk about the uh, officiating shortage. And again, if you want to become an official, go to OHSAA.org, click on officials, and you will see the classes that will be held in the Mahoning Valley uh, and throughout the state, I, I, I would also add, uh, in all of the sports. So if you're interested in, say, volleyball, uh, you would uh, obviously look for the volleyball classes in, uh, in the area uh, when they start and, and just be part of that. Uh, football, I believe they start uh, pretty soon. Uh, in probably in the next two weeks or so, and I know uh, uh, Mr. Tarantino is going Quentin? to be the uh, no, 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 no. That would that would probably be. I a, thought we were getting real like high school high school football featuring. I, I mean that would kill Bill. Beep, yeah, beep, that, uh, uh, yeah, if Quentin Tarantino were the uh, person in charge, I think there'd be a little bit more just officiating classes going on. I think we would also be smoking some things. I'm not saying that you know. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino's not a not a guy that does a lot of the uh, uh, ganja weed, but I'm just <laughs> I'm just saying that uh, you know uh, bong is something that is probably familiar with him. Just saying, uh, but it would be cool to see uh, Quentin Tarantino uh, doing some uh, doing some of that. And that would be uh, that would be entertaining. He's got some weird movies. Yeah. Oh man, that's some weird weird movies. Very different. All right, three three zero eight eight six zero eight one three. So who, who, who is Tarantino you were actually talking about? Quentin. Yeah, but you said Tarantino and I said Quentin. Oh, oh, so, uh, John Tarantino. Okay. Yeah, he's gonna be he's gonna be uh, heading the um, the football classes. So okay. it should be a uh, should be fun. Should be a good time. And uh, again, the uh, once you become a football official, you'd probably start in uh, in the pre-junior high or junior high level but the, the jump up to the uh, up to the varsity level is is not that far uh it's you know a, a good friend of ours uh, uh is is uh had the classes a couple of years ago and we'll see what happens this year uh, uh it's it's a very worthwhile it's just be, becoming an official period uh is is very worthwhile all right let's get to the phone lines here real quick uh, thanks for waiting. You're on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. What's going on? Never gonna give you up. Never gonna weigh you down. Yeah. We're getting it. We're gonna get copyright slam now. Yeah. Yep. Here it comes the copyright slam. All right. That's uh, that, that. That wakes us up. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Oh Lord. Uh, uh, I I, I want to hear you do karaoke one night. I think that you get a microphone in your hands and have you sing. Is this thing uh, Have you sing karaoke and just uh, enlighten uh, uh, enlighten what, the crowd? What's, what's the guy, uh, Back to the Future? Uh, you know that you know that uh, terrible funky new age stuff you've been looking for. <laughs> well, listen to this. Hey, Chuck! Chuck! Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> this is your cousin, Marvin. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we had some great Class B pitching uh, last night from the Astro Falcons. Two Division One signees in uh, Jacob Bazala and Tom Tommy Beam pitched a combined six innings, only gave up one hit, no runs, struck out ten and uh, ten batters combined in Astros seven to nothing win over Creekside. Yikes! Solid pitching, and then Jake Coral pitched a heck of a game for Dura Edge as well. So. Some really good pitching on the 18U side of, of Class B at Bob Seam Park. Did they get night. any rain last night over in Struthers? See, I don't know. I, I, they got all the games in, so I imagine if they got rain, then it wasn't enough to 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 um, 
stop the games. See, we had a lightning delay with rain in Springfield, but that field held up, uh, and it wound up being a six-inning game because uh, by B League rules, uh, ten after five or eight after six uh, would be an official game. See this? Well, I guess six innings because you didn't have to pitch the seventh, but they pitched six innings combined, so I don't know if this Falcons game went six. Well, no, I mean, they're probably the home team. So. Right, so they didn't have to pitch but then, the seventh. But then you'd have to pitch oh. the seventh inning. Right. You'd still have to pitch the seventh inning regardless. So. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe they just had a six-inning uh, shortened game. Um, uh, 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 well, it, it was a 7 nothing final score, or was it 8 nothing? 7. Okay, well, then it should have been a seven-inning game. So Dura Edge beat um, Avalanche. No, uh, the Athletics, A to Z Athletics. Uh, five to one, and Jake Coral threw all seven innings, only gave up three hits, one run. It wasn't earned. Struck out nine, walked one. So uh, imp- impressive pitching from him, as well as the uh, two D one commits for for the Astro Falcons. Yeah, that it's a um, it's a fun league, uh, and obviously with the talent uh, in this area, albeit in in scattered in about six or seven schools, but. And there's a couple of schools that uh, that made a, a really nice uh, run this year, but uh, by and large, you know, we uh, Canfield is loaded. We we pretty much know that Salem is was loaded this year, obviously. Uh, Warren JFK is still hoping to uh, play their uh, state semifinal game, which, by the way, got moved to Saturday. Right. Uh, the OHSAA has decided that they're going to be one step ahead of Mother Nature. Uh, so they're starting everything on Friday instead of today. They did this for softball, too. Well, I, I think they found out that today's forecast wasn't supposed to be all that special. Uh, so I, I guess they they preemptively decided, hey, we're going to um, we're we're going to make sure that um, we push everything to uh, to. Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, and then have the state championship games on Sunday. You know, and you look at the radar, and, and there's going to be showers uh, popped up all over the place, especially in the Akron area. So, it's probably a wise decision for the OHSAA to uh, uh, to do something, and and just you know, you, you got the entire weekend. Some other scores from 18U uh, from Scene Park. Prospects beat Eagle Wear five to three. Uh, Avalanche just absolutely buried Whiting Roloffs, uh, fourteen to nothing, uh, and Nightline beat uh, Ballistic three to two, along with Guastro winning seven to nothing over Creekside and Dura Edge winning five to one over eight as the Athletics. Those are the eight, eighteen U games. Yep. All right, and again, everyone, uh, with the exception of JFK, if there are JFK kids that are playing in the B League, they can't play. Until their high school season is can their uh, younger finished. kids that aren't on the varsity roster? Play? I mean, I don't know if they have kids that are playing in Class B that were on the JV roster, or they have to wait until varsity's done. I I don't know. Like about if they don't that dress one. for that tournament game because you know, you you only you only dress so many people for a tournament game. Sure. Every, so if you don't dress, are you allowed to say, okay, my season's done, or do you have to wait until your entire I, program? Is I done? would assume that you would you would wait. Uh, until your season is over, uh, if the JVs want to play, I would think that they would be allowed to play. It's interesting uh, because they're not part of the varsity program. Right. But I do know that the OHSAA has real strict rules in terms of, hey, you're not allowed to play summer ball with anybody until your baseball season with your high school is is complete. Because if you don't do that, uh, then you're essentially an in. in ineligible player uh, and then your high school team suffers because of that right uh, so uh, one would hope uh, and, and obviously um, but see yeah but if you're not on the see that this might answer if you're not on the varsity roster you're not going to be you're not going to have to worry about it whether or not you're yeah I, I would think that if the JV kids the kids that just got done playing JV baseball at Warren JFK if you're not on the varsity roster you should be allowed to play uh, summer league, uh, and, and who knows how, how many of those kids would play in B league? But Cam Hollabaugh plays in B league, doesn't he? Yes. Well, then he would be—he's not allowed to play until after no. Sunday. Right. Uh, and we're assuming that we get that all in. Let's 
hope and pray that it doesn't rain all this weekend because if it does they have a serious problem because the Akron rubber ducks are coming back home next right. week and now all of a sudden that whole hey the rubber ducks are out of town we can do whatever we want now you're going to have to play those games in the morning or in in an in an area where time wise you're not going to be very that, popular or, or go you're going to have to find another venue and go to maybe like Akron Hoban or yeah or Maslin Washington in, yeah. in that area but then we would then we would have the argument that you just mentioned at the top of the show Akron Hoban's in the state semifinals could you imagine if uh, you know if if we had rain this weekend yeah. and it forced the cancellation of Look, of our state tournament? All of a sudden, oh, Hoban said, "Well, we can use their football. We can use their facilities." How many people would come out of the woodwork and say, "Well, that's home field advantage." Here's the thing: but if in Canal Park, the Hoban fans are ten minutes away. Exactly, they're gonna be there. Yeah, exactly, in, in large droves. Exactly. So, what's the difference between them being there in Canal Park and them being there? In, I mean, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, you just hope because you hope that the kids get the experience of playing in a professional field and that crowd atmosphere. So you, you hope that you, they can work it out. Yeah, but. and and obviously uh, for me, uh, it's one of my favorite ballparks uh, to to broadcast a game from. I, I absolutely love that place. It's um, I, I had many opportunities to do it in two thousand and nine uh, when Akron and Altoona would play each other a ton of times. I think they came to our place three times. We went to their place three times. Uh, and then after I was done doing uh, minor league baseball, the Erie broadcaster uh, was spending a weekend out of town, and he wanted me to do three-game series with uh, Erie coming to Akron. So I was able to go back there and do a, a couple more games at, at Canal Park. It's one of my favorite ballparks. I absolutely love that park. As a fan, as a broadcaster, it is, uh, and it's just my humble opinion. I think that ballpark is so much better than Huntington Ballpark in Columbus, especially in the sense of being a member of the press. Oh, absolutely. And where you're put for yep. media. You you get your own facilities instead of being in the outside. Now, granted, I'm not saying that it's terrible what they've done in Columbus, but you're in the elements per se. Uh, if it rains, you have the the uh, upper deck as you know, cover, but if it's raining sideways, you're going to get nailed. Uh, you don't have an area to put your game notes to to nope. tape them up anywhere. Uh, they do have one of these plastic covers that you can put a game note and then put the plastic cover on top of it. Oh, okay, I guess. Uh, it just it's it, otherwise the stadium is beautiful. It's a beautiful stadium. They just they didn't do a very good job when it came to the broadcaster's point of view. But I, I'll put Akron Stadium from a fan base. I'll put Akron Stadium up against Columbus' stadium any day of the week. And I love Canal Park. And I'll tell you, the other ballpark that I really love is uh, is Blair County Ballpark in Altoona. And if you're a Pirates fan, it's not that big of a drive, although State Route 22 is a pain in the ass because they, they, they don't uh, – they. I haven't ridden that road very often uh, since 2009, but last time I did, it was as bumpy as I remember it. Uh, but Altoona's stadium is just absolutely gorgeous, and you've got a roller coaster uh, overlooking the right field fence, which is cool as hell. You can't beat that, right? Yeah, I, I mean... did. I, I did the seventh inning stretch riding the roller coaster uh, in, in Altoona. I'm so, sure you did. Yeah. Uh, it, oh, absolutely! It was it was a blast. What, I, uh, what I, roller coaster is it? it it's uh, is it Kennywood? Uh, no, it's no. A, it's a uh, it's a park in uh, in Altoona. It's it's not, I mean it's not that great. Of, I mean it's it's a, it's a nice park. It's not a Jogga Lake or Cedar Point or something like that. But uh, it's a it has about ten rides in the uh, in the park. Uh, but the stadium is right next to the roller coaster, and it's I mean it's cool as hell. You'll see people riding the roller coaster at night when someone drills a ball over the right field now, wall. If you're if you're really unlucky, you'll be riding the roller coaster and get hit in the head with a ball. Well, look, that would be terrible, terrible it, luck. You would have to really destroy the baseball <laughs> in order to nail someone on the roller coaster. I mean, you're talking at least 460 feet uh, for you, you, for someone you, to. You, 
get off the ride. What are you, some kind of cruddy hitter? I hit you, didn't I? <laughs> you were going about 70 miles an hour. Yeah. It's a pretty good shot in my book. Yeah, th- there you go. I'm, t- I'm, I'm accurate. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> You've yeah. been heckling me for too long. I heard you every time you took that loop. Yeah. I'm not get you. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's, a, uh, that's a nice stadium. But uh, for my money, Akron and Jacksonville are my two favorite double-A stadiums. Those, oh, now Jacksonville's triple-A. So they're, they're, the, uh, they're the big shots they're, now. They're the smaller battery. Yeah. Yeah, they're the, they're the triple-A instead of the double-A. Uh, but Jacksonville, uh, they share their parking with the Jags. Okay. You've got the you've got the football stadium. It sounds like the Kansas City setup, yeah. which on, I think is amazing. And then on the other side of the football stadium, you have this what, ten thousand, eleven thousand seat minor league stadium uh, that gets filled beyond filled uh, when they have Thursday night beers for a dollar. Uh, went to a, a few games when we were when I was working in Jackson there for a Thursday night game an hour before the. Uh, gates open you had a line all the way around the ballpark of people wanting to get in to take advantage of the dollar beers i'm like okay gonna have a lot of fun tonight with, i don't with really like people. baseball but they got them dollar beers <laughs> and their old owner used to uh, he had a used car dealership so he would have used car night at the ballpark and he would give away these used cars we're giving away a 1988 saturn yeah. Oh, oh it, it, I'll take it. The, the guy, the guy brought in some pretty interesting looking cars. I'm like, okay, I wouldn't probably buy this, but if you're gonna give this to me, uh, okay. Yeah. That looks like a metal death trap. It's like that he brings out like a pacer. <laughs> There's a 1970 Ford Pinto. The engine's in the back. Just don't get rear-ended. You'll explode and fall into a million pieces. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's a car that I want to drive. Here's a Plymouth. <laughs> Here's an AMC. <laughs> What's the uh, Oldsmobile? Yeah. Oh, the, those don't uh, exist uh, anymore. But those Old, were like Oldsmobiles were cool though. <laughs> yeah. My my grandmother had. She we thought it was so cool that my dad had a cell phone in his car. It was like, oh my gosh, we're we're high tech now. <laughs> <laughs> my grandmother used to uh, used to drive V8 automobiles. I'm like, what? I could add a in, V8. In what world are you wanting a V8 automobile? No, 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 no. But she used to drive an Oldsmobile that was badass. <laughs> this thing was, it could go pretty quick. Uh, it, it could go pretty quick. But, uh, yeah, yeah. It's th- this guy was just, he would give away cars. I'm like, okay. Once a year, he'd give away these these cars. And here's a Studebaker. I'm like, um, yeah, now I can see why you're giving this away. A bunch of people are sitting there saying, why couldn't it be a used jacuzzi salesman? Yeah, there you go. Come on. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to buy a used jacuzzi, though. Yeah, you clean it and everything. Well, I mean, you'd have to clean the heck out of that thing. Chlorine wipes away everything oh, absolutely. that left. No, I, I get that. I get that. I get that. Um, speaking of investigating things, the um, we are way off track. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, I was thinking, I was thinking of the umpires putting the ultraviolet rays on the jacuzzis, going, "All right, uh, let me, uh, you got to clean this spot up over here." If, it's, uh, if you can't see it, then don't worry about it being there. Yeah. Wow. Fortunately, they don't do <laughs> that for baseball. Think, that's how they think in Florida. Yeah. Fortunately, they're not thinking that way in baseball no. now. Yeah. Do you see that? Um, well, who who is the uh, hitter from the Mets that came out and supported the pitcher's right to have stuff? Oh, uh, that would Alonso. be their first baseman, Alonso? Yeah. yeah. And his Pito. his argument was like, if they lose a grip on a ninety nine mile an hour fastball, I don't want to be hit by it. Oh, I can agree with that. And, and apparently, to his perspective, rosin and sweat isn't enough to grip a ninety nine mile an hour yeah, fastball. See, I think it is. And, um, uh, Royals Royals manager said the same thing. He said. You're going to see a lot more people get hit if we take away the pitcher's ability to grip the ball. I'm not saying that you should completely take it away, but you got to get rid of some of the stuff that's just way too far over the edge. Mm -hmm. you got a rosin bag there for a reason. I mean, look, if you're playing a day game, you're going to have sunscreen on because nobody wants skin cancer. Uh, So if you have the bullfrog sunscreen and you do one of these numbers and you do one of these numbers with the uh, rosin bag, you've got it more than enough 
sticky stuff on your fingers to uh, to to do it. But when you're starting to take spider tack, uh, which is the stuff used by power lifters to make sure that they have a grip on a 700 pound or 800 pound uh, item, okay, now you've taken things a little too far. Uh, where you've get glue uh, substances on a baseball. No, now you've taken it way too far. You just have. And I think uh, if someone went and showed video of, here's a normal slider, to Alonzo, here's a normal slider that you swung and missed on. Here's a slider with the spider tech that you swung and missed on. Yeah, and did you... Good, s- do you want to keep going up against that? Yeah, do you because, still want to go up against that? Because, um, you know, now we... now Because we, this has been going on for forever. People putting stuff on their fingers. Sure. I mean, they, they had... Um, I forget who it was. They had someone on the broadcast last night talk about how he used to put pine tar on his belt. Yep. Uh, but now we have numbers that can tell you how much of an, of an, of an advantage it gives the hitters. Well, see, here's... And, and it, the analytics, can, you can see spin rate and say it gives them X amount of spin rate more. Yeah. And that kind of freaks people out. Okay. Here's the, th- here's the thing why I'm not... I, I, I don't get as jacked up about spin rate as you guys do. I've yet to hear an average spin rate. If somebody gave me a base number and said, okay, what is a normal fastball, normal slider, normal curveball? What is considered to be a normal spin rate? And I can work on that number and like say... like average Joe yeah, spin rate an, an or average, like a normal MLB spin rate? An, an, average, an average MLB spin rate. So I can now have a base number to say, okay, there's something seriously wrong with this picture. I mean, I can see in my head... When a slider is is having so much bite on it that it just explodes out of the person's hand and then goes way off the reservation, it's an okay. it's an unhittable pitch. So this is the MLB spin efficiency mean for two, 2020 for every different pitch. So for a sinker, it was 89, 89, 89, you know. Was the average spin rate? No, 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 hundred, just eighty nine. For change up, it was eighty. This is average, though. I mean, there are probably. I mean, but guys, but, but, but what is it? it just eighty nine or eight hundred and ninety? Eighty nine. It says eighty nine. Eighty nine. Okay. Um, change up is eighty nine point three. Okay. Curveball is sixty eight point seven, and the slider is thirty five point nine. But that doesn't make any sense. The RPMs. That that doesn't that doesn't. Okay. Wait, wait. Now, spin efficiency might be different. I, yeah, I, that's a that's a way different thing. Spin uh, rate was what we're looking for. All right, I'm looking. I'm looking. Fill time for me. Yeah. Um, I, I will say this: one of the reasons why the Major League Baseball doesn't have the high seams is for the very same reason what we're talking about right now. I remember. You remember Jake Peavy? had a great, uh, about a five-year stretch with the San Diego Padres. He was rehabbing in AA Mobile, and I had a Southern League baseball in my, uh, uh, in my okay, bag. I got that. Okay, so in 2020, the highest recorded spin rate was Rafael Betancourt at 2,553 RPM. Throwing what? It doesn't say. It just says it was the highest recorded. Okay. The average was 2,226. And the lowest spin rate was 1,743. Okay. Uh, but, but that's just for any pitch. Right. So, so they, they haven't broken it down yet to say, this is the average RPM for a fastball. This is the average RPM for a slider. This is the average RPM uh, for a curveball. Average RPM for a, a changeup. I mean, I got to have a number so I can sit back and go, oh, compared to... This number, they've gone north about 700 RPM. Hmm. All right. Now I can get a little excited. I, I just, for me, it's, I look at the, I, I'm looking at it with my two eyes and saying, this ball that is, is doctored because there's way too much movement on this pitch. Okay. So the ones I just said were four, four seam straight fastballs. So that was 2,553 was the highest for a four seam. Okay. And 1,743 was the lowest for a four seam. The average was 2,226. 2,226 for a four-seam fastball. The average velocity for the MLB uh, fastball, well, four-seam fastball last year, the average was 92.9 miles an hour. Okay. Geraldo's Chapman threw the fastest one, and the slowest one was uh, 84 miles an hour from Burley. 
Mark Burley. Gotcha. Um, now it says two seam fastballs. The highest spin rate was 2,484 from Garrett Richards. Okay. The average is 2,123. Okay. And the lowest was 1,741 from Willie Peralta. Who's probably given up a lot of home runs at that point because there's not a lot of movement on his two-seam um, fastball. The highest velocity on a two-seam two fastball from 2020 was 98.1 miles an hour from Kelvin Herrera. Mm-hmm. The average is 91.9 miles an hour. And Burley had the slowest again with the 82.1 mile an hour two-seam fastball. Okay, and the two-seam fastball is a sinker. The four-seam fastball is the regular fastball that people will throw. The next pitch that they have recorded is a cutter. Okay. cut fastball, whatever you want to call it. The highest spin rate in 2020 was Kinsley Jensen with a 2,555 spin rate. So, Jensen can really throw a good cutter. Yeah. Uh, the average for the MLB was 2,185. And the lowest spin rate for a cut fastball in 2020 was 1,712 from Tim Hudson. Okay. The highest velocity was 95.6. That seems low to me for a cut fastball. Yeah, Emmanuel Clase blew that out of the water. Because he's thrown a ridiculous amount of pitches over 100 miles an hour, right. and he throws a cut fastball. Um, the MLB average was 88, and the lowest was 78.7 from Burley again. So 88 mile an hour is the average cut fastball. Yeah. This is why I love uh, Class A, without the steroids that make him go. <laughs> okay, now this, this one's for a split finger fastball. Which is a two-seam fastball. So well, no, I mean they, they the split fi- okay. The split finger is d- different from a two seam. They Never have mind. it in two different. Ca- okay, yeah. so the two highest, seam is a sinker. Highest spin rate was uh, Charlie Morton. He had a spin rate of two thousand and seventy-seven. Okay. MLB average was one thousand five hundred twenty-four. All right. And Mike uh, Peffrey, I've never heard of him, had the lowest spin rate of eight hundred thirty. What's the average velocity on a split? The average velocity is 84.8. The highest velocity was familiar with 94.4. And the hmm. lowest velocity was 79.8. Now, this is all 2020. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now we're going into a changeup, which shouldn't have a high spin rate because you don't want the ball to spin on a changeup. No. But the highest was 2,421 from Danielle Hudson. Okay. The MLB average is 1,746, which is a lot lower than the other ones. Makes sense. Okay. The smallest spin rate for a changeup in 2020 was 961. Okay. From Nathan Evaldi. Ah, yes. Now, what's the average uh, velocity on a changeup? Average velocity is 83.9. 83.9, all right. And the lowest was 71.9. And then, let's see, highest... 89.9. Okay. So what about the curveball? Let's see. The next is slider. Ah, okay. Well, we got to throw the slider in there. Now, you know you're going to get a lot of RPMs on this bad boy. Highest spin rate is uh, 2,654 from Junichi Tozawa. Okay. MLB average is 2,090. 2,090 is the average. Yep. Okay. And the lowest spin rate was Darren O'Day with 916. Okay. Now, how fast does that pitch get thrown? Average velocity is 84.6 miles an hour. All right. So you're actually throwing the slider and the change at about the same rate. Change at 83.9, slider 84.6. But there's more RPMs on the Slide. On the on the slider because it moves away. If you're left-handed, it moves away from the right-handed batter. If you're right-handed, it moves into the right-handed batter. All right. So curveballs. Ah, this is this is going to be fun. Spin rate. The highest uh, is three thousand and eighty-six. Comes from Richards. It doesn't give a first name. It just okay. says Richards. All know. right. Um, the MLB average is two thousand three hundred and eight, and the lowest. Spin rate was 1,302 from Logan Kensing. 
and I'm sure that ball was hit about 500 <laughs> feet if it was hanging. And the average speed on a curveball? Average speed is 78.2 miles an hour. 0.2 miles an hour. The fastest curveball thrown in 2020 was 85.9. Okay, so if I'm seeing a curveball where it's 2308 was the average last year, and I'm seeing a curveball at 2,900 and 2,800 and 3,200. Right. I'm looking at this going, and you look I at, smell bullshit somewhere. You look at the, the highest spin rate is in 3,000. So that's about 700 more than the average. Yeah. So now I have, thank you very much for these numbers. Now I have a base of saying, you kind of understand why everyone is freaking out about Hey, uh, there's way too much movement on these on these baseballs. Now, Pete Alonso said something yesterday, along with, "Hey, I don't mind these guys using that because I don't want to get drilled by uh, uh, by a pitch." He also said something really. Uh, he made the comment about changing balls. He, he right? made a he made a really bold statement by saying that uh, the baseballs used change every year depending on what free agency class so if you had guys that was a more of a pitching free agency you didn't use baseballs that were pitching friendly you used baseballs that were hitter friendly that would be jerked out of the ball yard pretty quickly because ultimately the owners don't want to play these uh, pay these players an asterisk amount of money now, the conspiracy theory behind all of this and the reason why Major League Baseball has had all kinds of problems the last three or four years, you have to go back to a time period that I don't think gets enough credit. Rawlings Company sold their Major League Baseball to Major League Baseball. So now Major League Baseball is in charge of the ball instead of an independent company you're now trusting the baseball to major league baseball i don't know about you but given what these numbers uh, are just mind-numbing uh, above average numbers all across the board in 2021 i'm not trusting major league baseball all that much right now to the point where this is all in the uh this is all under the watch of Rob Manfred. And uh, those numbers were all, all on MLB.com. Um, in the, so it's, it's from MLB. I didn't get yeah. enough of some weird... Um, the, the article is the spectrum of stack cast spin versus velocity. Okay, so... So just to cite my sources. Yeah, so you're looking at a... Uh, you're looking at some damning evidence now. Because I'm hearing sliders are, are up to 26, 2700 RPM where the average last year was 2,090. That's a hell of a lot more movement yep. on a slider this year than last year. Don't tell me that this ball isn't being loaded by the pitchers. They are. It's And, and now that and great journalism, by the way, between uh, between Athletic, uh, ESPN. Ken Ken, well, Ken Rosenthal right. writes now for The Athletic. Yeah, Just some yeah. great journalism being uh, being. Uh, being brought out there by a bunch of baseball writers that have finally said enough. And, and I said this well, a couple of days ago, you didn't see major league baseball freak out about the steroid era until, for a while until someone said, you know what, this is, yeah, it got to a point where it was, you can't ignore it anymore. Yeah. When Barnes hit 73 and real records started falling or, or were being threatened, then people said, "Hey, wait a second. You know, I know I know a lot of tickets are being sold, but this this isn't on the up and up. We gotta we gotta slow this down." And here's the thing: the the one scene I, I forget who was on the Royal Angels ESPN broadcast last night. They brought him in for like two innings. He made the point that in the steroid era, everyone knew what everyone was doing. Like there was no secrets. Like you 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 would go to spring training and be like, "This guy is fifty pounds heavier in one year. We know what he's doing." Yeah. And the options were you either do it or you don't. Like, exactly. Like you either do it to win or you don't. And, 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 and we've talked about this. It's not about pitch. the superstars. It's right. about the 24th and 25th guy. 
that, that their job is on the line, whether they're going to come out of spring training on a major league club or back in AAA. If the 24th or 25th guy that you're going up against is on steroids, you either got to be on steroids or you understand there's a really good chance you're going back to AAA. Now, I also get the, the, the people that are scared, of like Alonzo and Mike Matheny, of these hitters are going to start to get hit because these pitchers have been doing this for a long time. And now you're saying you can't use this substance anymore, and they have to get used to gripping a ball a different way. So they're either going to have to, you know, really work hard to grip that 99 mile an hour fastball with a new method, or they're going to lose command of it. They're not going to throw 99 anymore. Right. That's you know, you can get velocity if you have a really hard grip on a ball. You can get velocity and movement uh, if if you're hanging on to the ball and, and able to explode that ball out of your hand I suppose you could gain a little bit of velocity not a lot but the movement would be uh, out of control outrageous so in, in Pete Alonso's case okay if he if this pitcher doesn't have a really hard sticky substance on their fingers are they going to be able to control uh, an inside pitch or uh, uh, any kind of a pitch where I'm not going to get drilled right. it's a good question uh, it's a good question. Especially now, up and in. Because, like, up and in fastballs nowadays are really popular. Oh, sure. People want to throw up and in. Yeah. And if you lose control of that, you're talking about not just injuring a guy for a couple of weeks. You're talking about hitting him in the head with a 99-mile-an-hour projectile, which can damage his whole life <laughs> with a, with a high-grade concussion. The other part of this was Buck Showalter, um, who was on uh, – I think he's on ESPN now again. Either that or MLB Network. Um, Josh Donaldson had made a comment about they need to they need to ham drop the hammer on everybody uh, that's doing this. And Buck Showalter said, "Okay, then I think the hitters should have to go up to home plate without pine tar on their bat, without batting gloves, and you go old school." where you have no batting gloves in your hand, you have no pine tar on your bat, and you're just going to go grab some dirt, put it in your hands, grab the bat, and let's go. Okay, uh, we go old school here. Uh, here's, here's the thing. If you do that, home runs are going to be down an awful lot because you're not going to be able to swing the ball or swing the bat very well without a sticky substance, i.e. pine tar or your batting gloves that are sticky substance. Uh, they're, that's why they have batting gloves, so you, can, so you can grip the bat without having it go through your hands. And here's, I think the difference is the batting glove, the pine tar, four hitters are an approved piece of equipment. Yeah. And spider tack is not. It's not. No, <laughs> it, it definitely isn't. It's so. It, I'm not, I, and I don't want people to. I don't want people to think that I'm completely anti pitchers grabbing uh, some uh, some rosin or grabbing something that's going to allow them to hang on to the ball. First, I mean, before we even get into the conversation, these balls are not completely white, just out of the out of the package and here go throw this baseball no they're rubbed in some mud uh so they're they're no no longer uh, pristine and that has a little bit of traction on it uh but you do you obviously have to have uh rosin uh and that's why rosin bags are there uh if you want to use uh, just rosin bag great I, I think the pitchers can do that look 50 years ago guys were they loading up the uh, the baseballs? Gaylord Perry was. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I'm um, sure there were other people that were loading up the baseballs, but there were some that didn't. Do you remember that Sports Center commercial where it was Gaylord Perry and he, you know, he got up from someone's desk and they go to type on the keyboard and it's like, oh, yeah. Gaylord. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's. It, I can't say that it it, it wasn't something that was uh, it, you know th that it's new right now. Hell no, it's not new. It's been going on for years, but but unfortunately, everyone's taken it to a really ridiculous level to the point uh, where Major League Baseball has to step in. Nolan Ryan had interviews where he said, you know, everyone's using it. Yeah. You know, would you use it? Uh, he. The, the interview asked him, Did, are you using it? And he said, no. And he said, would you tell me if you were? 
Nola Ryan said no. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> it, it uh, but but I, I get a kick out of yeah. people saying, well, a ten game suspension should be enough. In what world is a ten game suspension enough for a pitcher? <laughs> Not for a especially for a starter. That's only two starts. It's two games really. I, I mean if you wanna if you wanna send an attention, it's a fifty game suspension. So he actually does miss ten he games. Miss ten starts. Yeah. yeah, he'll he'll miss ten starts or ten games. Uh, the, a ten game suspension for an everyday player is a but see, bunch different than a ten game suspension for a starting pitcher. The big needle point in that is even if the starter's not getting paid, he gets paid for that game. So you're taking fifty games out of his salary instead of ten games. So they want ten games out. Of the money that he's getting paid. Well, that's what that should so, be. So, uh, but he, the starter still gets paid for being at the ballpark when he's not starting. Yeah. So if you suspend him for 10 games, he's losing 10 games of salary. If you suspend him for 50 games, he's losing 10 starts plus 50 games of his money. See, it, So I think that's where people are sticking to. And, sticking and I get that. And I think the union is probably using that argument, saying you can't, you can't suspend someone – a starting pitcher for 50 games because he's going to be out a ridiculous amount of money. To which I would sit back and go, no, you're going to suspend him for 10 starts, which means I'll pay you for your 40 games, but you're not going to get paid for 10 games. So take the 10 games so off of the 162. Right. You're suspended for 50 games. But you're going to miss 10 starts. That's why you could just make it you're suspended for 10 starts. Because then you can go to the ballpark and be paid for those games that you're not starting. Exactly. So you're suspended for 10 you're starts. You're suspended for 10 starts. The other 40 days or 40 games in which you're not a part of, yeah, you'll get paid. But you're not going to get paid for those 10 starts. So now all of a sudden, how many pitchers or starters are going to do this? Um I would say very few of them would do that, but like I said, I think it's it should be the same. It should be the same, uh, the exact same punishment for the steroid people. First offense, eighty games. So that's what eighty divided by five is sixteen starts. You're out for sixteen starts uh, if you're an if you're an everyday pitch if uh, uh, if you're a uh, starting pitcher. If you're a relief pitcher and you're out eighty games, oh well. Sucks to be you. Half of your salary is gone. Uh, and half of the salary for a starting pitcher is gone. Sorry about your luck. Uh, how, many, how many pitchers do you honestly think are going to go back on, on the spider attack or whatever? You'll see all that crap go away to where, okay, this is what we're going to allow you to have. Here's a rosin bag. You have your... Uh, you, can, you, can, you can put... Whatever, uh, whatever else. If you have uh, if you have uh, suntan or sunscreen and, and oh, rosin, suntan, well, yeah, <laughs> sunscreen and and uh, and your rosin bag is or water in the rosin bag is a really nice mixture as well. Uh, that's all you should have. That's I mean, it, it worked for about ninety percent of the pitchers way back in the day. Now the argument people will say is well way back in the day, they didn't throw 90-plus miles an hour. Now, a few pitchers did, but most of them didn't. So I, I just I think Major League Baseball has a problem here. And, and well, it's, it's, shocker. It's, starting to affect, it's starting to affect the game in that what's the, the cumulative batting average at this point is it's 234. Like 230, yeah. I, that's embarrassing. That, that's embarrassing. I mean, that's, we're talking historically low numbers at that point. Let's look at stat leaders right now in baseball. Well, Let's I know see. that the National League leader at last the last I saw was like 333 something of of that nature. I think Vlad Guerrero was leading the American League uh in, in batting average. Um I'm not sure what the uh what the exact number is. Although I will say Vlad Guerrero uh is very close to uh, holding the triple A or the uh, triple crown. Um, so right now, Nick Castellanos leads all of baseball with a three fifty six batting average. Yes. Uh, he's in the National League. And then his teammate, I don't know his first name, Winker, 
is hitting 344. So two reds are at the top in the average. Okay. Um, uh, Guriel from the Astros is hitting 335. Adam Frazier is hitting 331. Guerrero is hitting 330. Mullins from the Orioles is hitting 323. So I'm just trying to think. Okay, so. 13 hitters are above 1300 are above 300 right yeah now. only 13 and how many how many guys do we have in uh, major league baseball uh, uh, hundreds and only 13 of them have an average above 300 that's scary and then when you get to the top 25 the lowest of the top 25 is at 290 80 you have to go to 87. 87th to get 250. Yeah, that's not good. Because normally you have a couple of hundred guys hitting at least 250. Now, the home run leader is Acuna with 18. Guerrero has 18. Otani has 7. That, that guy's a freaking nature, by the oh, way. Oh, my Lord. He's, he is the modern-day Babe Ruth. Otani can pitch and he can hit. He's the modern-day Babe Ruth. I mean, I don't think he does it as well as Babe does, but or Uh-oh. did. But, I mean, he's the modern-day Babe Ruth. I mean, he's the first guy At to actually... At least he's actually, going up against everybody. Yeah, he's the first guy to actually do what Babe Ruth is doing. Right. Uh, and that's, that's absolutely Ruth is incredible. the only pitcher, well, only player to have 70-plus wins on the mound and have 70 home runs. And I that's, think Otani's in a. Otani's that. going to it. Otani's going to be the uh, second player <laughs> to uh, to win seventy games and hit at least seventy home runs. Uh, what he's doing is nothing short of a, of incredible. Uh, by the way, Vlad Guerrero uh, with a four thirty eight on ber- on base percentage and an OPS over a thousand. Yeah, and like in a father down like year, son. like father like yeah, son. in a down year where the offense is garbage this year. Uh, you know, it's, I'll be real curious to see what Major League Baseball decides to do. Um, by the way, game going on right now in Pittsburgh. The uh, Dodgers lead the Pirates 4-3. to three. They're in the bottom of the fifth inning. Uh, Mookie Betts is homered for the, uh, for the Dodgers. His sixth home run of the year, he hit it off of uh, Keller. Uh, Keller has gone, uh, what, two and two-third. That was it. Went f- uh, four runs, five hits, three walks, three strikeouts. Keller's earned run average is up over seven. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. Uh, Reynolds hit his 10th home run of the year for uh, for the Pirates. Boy, this kid's hitting the crap out of the ball. He uh, he and and uh, Frazier are fantastic. And, and then you throw in key Brian Hayes. Uh, that's a good base to build upon for the Pirates. Very good base to build on for the Bucks. They just got to go out and get some more bodies and hope their so minor league kids are getting Brown, there. The Browns just announced their first preseason game is going to be against Urban Meyer and the Jaguars. There you go. August 14th. Is it in Cleveland or is it in Jacksonville? It doesn't say. It just says Browns' first preseason game versus Jacksonville. Hopefully that game is in Cleveland. I'd like to see that. By the way, Dustin Johnson just hit, uh, just shot a six under par sixty five, um, and he was not on any of our lists. No, and I. Uh, Do we dare ask how our golfers I, are? Doing? I uh, I picked Kapka instead of Johnson this week. No, you picked Lucas Glover. Well, no, I picked Lucas Glover, and right now he's even through five holes. Okay. Um, but I picked in my oh, in my head to head matchup. Okay. I picked Kapka. Over Johnson, Kapka is even through five holes, so he's six shots back. Yeah, I got a lot of crap on my uh, on my list here, right now. This is not good. He did that two twice. Yeah, this this is this is not good, not good. Uh, we're going to take a timeout. Be back with more on this uh, Thursday edition of Running Points on YSNLive.com. Stick around. No matter what the weather, be prepared with a reliable, efficient brew gas furnace or air conditioner from MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. Call your energy efficient expert, MP Vivo, today for a free estimate. Here at MP Vivo, we rely on Rude, and so should you. It's storm season. I think we're under the gun for some heavy storms over the next couple of hours. And Storm Tracker 21 is ready. This is probably the one we're keeping a closer eye on. On air. 
and locally we're going to have a lot of eyes on our area. Online. All right, let's talk high risk future cast and the timing of this weather. On social media and on our app. Rain will come and go tomorrow. There'll be some dry intervals. Stay ready with Storm Tracker 21. A severe weather threat now through around sunset this evening. Myers Family Insurance knows the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. Sixty years ago, Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods began with three siblings, a handset sawmill, and a few local orders. And while business has certainly changed over the years, what has not are our principles of hard work, craftsmanship, and commitment to quality. At Baird Brothers, we're proud to put our name on the products we create, from moldings and doors to flooring and lumber. Thank you for 60 great years. We look forward to 60 more. Baird Brothers, for the place you love. Hi everyone, this is DJ Yokely with Your Sports Network. We appreciate your support of YSN and welcome you to the YSN family. Our broadcast streams are brought to you live and at no cost to you by sponsors that are local to this community. Without the vision and generosity of our sponsors and partners, we would not be able to bring this game to you today. So please support the great businesses and leaders that are making this game possible. And if you're a business in need of great advertising and sponsorship opportunities, feel free to head over to our site for more information on the right fit for you. We are local, we are loyal, and we are live. We are YSN. News doesn't stop after the sun goes down. Sometimes you just have to hustle to get it. At 21 News, no matter how far it is, no matter what it takes to get there, we're working to bring you the best stories and the freshest content at 11 p.m. with the context and clarity that makes it worth staying up for, no matter what time it is. 21 News at 11 with me, Aaron Simonek and Derek Steyer. 21 News at 11, news that's worth your time. WRS Wealth Advisors is the area's premier wealth and retirement specialist. With our combined 70 years experience and comprehensive wealth strategy, we assist our clients attain their goals. Call 330-965-965. 0370 to learn more about our individual and corporate financial planning services or visit wrswealthadvisors.com. Good luck, athletes. Every customer has a story, whether it's buying a car for the first time, helping them get approved, or finding the perfect car for their budget. I'm proud that people trust me with their story. I'm Tracy, and I'm ready to go the extra mile for you only at Greenwood Chevrolet. Welcome back to a Thursday edition of Running Point. Ron Potesta with you alongside Anthony Hartwig. 330-886-0813, the MPV vote. Heating and air conditioning hotline open for business. We're keeping an eye on the uh, Pirates game. It's getaway day, and of course with the Dodgers in town, you've got to play an afternoon game, final game of the series. Uh, they have played five innings of baseball at PNC. Uh, the Dodgers lead the Pirates 4-3 to three after five innings of ball. Four runs, five hits, no errors for the Dodgers. Three runs, six hits, no errors for the Buccos. I can't find it anymore, so I can't confirm, but I swear I saw yesterday on Twitter that uh, YSU is getting a transfer quarterback from Army. Really? It's from, like, the Canton area. Hmm. But now I can't find it, so I'm wondering if I was hallucinating or if I misread it, but I swear it was the kid's personal Twitter page, and I don't know who retweeted it or who saw it, but I swear I saw him say, I'm coming home, and he had the YSU, and he was from Army. But now I can't find it. So if you know. Hallucinating. If you know. Yeah, maybe it was all this Mountain Dew. Uh-huh. Getting to me. Yeah. 
What's what was the uh, my I don't even remember the kid's name. Favorite line in uh, Talladega Nights. One of the kids go, "We're all hopped up on Mountain Dew." <laughs> Hopped up on Mountain Dew. <laughs> the best part of that movie is when he's trying to convince him that he can't feel his legs. You tell me if I stab myself in my leg, I'm not going to feel it. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, you're going to feel it. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> oh, Lordy. All right, 330-886-0813, the MP Vivo <laughs> Heating and air conditioning hotline open for business. Uh, the YSU uh, camp, uh, the football camp, is already sold out. How about that? That's fantastic. Uh, we had the uh, the guy in charge of all the camps at Youngstown State, uh, and, and you uh, think of all the uh, the sports that are going to be offering a camp. You got the baseball camp, you got the softball camp, you got the soccer camp, you got the Volleyball. boys and girls uh, or men's and women's basketball. Uh, they're going to be doing a camp. You got the volleyball camp, you got the football camp. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a lot of camping going on. Let me tell you, that's some good good stuff. Uh, the YSU uh, men's basketball program announcing uh, that their Semester grade point average this spring, 3.68. The overall GPA amongst the basketball players, 3.33. With 14 players uh, this semester with a uh, GPA over 3 and 13 players with a GPA this year over 3. Two have a 4.0 cumulative grade Oof. point average and five had a 4.0 semester, excuse me, semester grade point average. That's that's impressive to yeah, have a four point while upholding a athletic career at a high level. Yeah, that's not too shabby, not too shabby at all. So uh, congratulations to the uh, basketball program. Youngstown State is is the program where they're kind of the antithesis of uh, oh the the uh, jock that's uh, just you're there just to play and you you uh, the grades really don't matter much. Uh, YSU get some smart kids. Uh, playing, uh, not only um, playing uh, the sport, but also uh, performing okay. on the ultimate level. Army quarterback Dadizi Curtis transfers to Youngstown State. Found it. Okay. So we are getting Dadizi Curtis from Army. Where is he from? He's from like the Canton area. Okay. So because his his post said coming home. All right. So well, we had Coach Phillips on. And I asked him about uh, whether or not Mark did enough to to get the starting job, and he said, "No, we're going to have a competition." Uh, and okay, the uh, the transfer portal. He said that the 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 Penguins were going to uh, go through the transfer portal well, and no matter and, how and much, take a look. No matter how much Mark did this this year, there's always going to be a competition. I mean, you have to feed your guys that your job's never safe. And that's this. I mean, because if you have a security blanket as your job, you're not going to try as hard. It's, it's human. It's human nature. Well, when you so, get to the pros, it's understood that you're going to be the starting well, quarterback. Okay, we're talking about calling. But him. but it's unless it's, you're Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, Aaron. Uh, you see Jordan Love yesterday. He's like, I'm going to be ready by week one. And yeah. he's, like, he's like, if you want to, he's pretty much sending Aaron Rodgers a message. It's like, if you want to mess around, I'll be ready. I, love, I love the swag. Yeah, I, that's fine. But he's nowhere near. Aaron Rodgers level. I know, but I still love the swagger. No, I get it, and I and I appreciate that. I mean, wh what was the kid supposed to say? Well, I ain't ready for this stuff. Aaron, come back, please. No, that's you're not gonna Baby, come back. You're not gonna you want a guy. You're not gonna want to play with a guy that that says something like that. That's that's absurd. Uh, so of course he's gonna be jacked up saying, oh, "Hey, give me the ball. I'm ready in, in week number one." Uh, whether or not uh, he is the starting quarterback in week number one, that remains to be seen. Um, I still think Rodgers is – he might throw out the R card and say, I'm not playing for you guys. You don't trade me, I'm retiring. He might eye Jeopardy and be like, I'm going to go host Jeopardy. Because the producers have said that they really like Aaron Rodgers. He wasn't bad. Now, see, I DVR Jeopardy, so I'm way behind because I watch it every day with my brother, but we don't watch it live. Okay. I'm still on, like, Dr. Oz being the guest host, and I don't like him. He did wasn't not good. Like him. Yeah, he wasn't good. I don't good. like his voice. He wasn't good. Mimit. I never, never knew it. his first name was Mimit. Wait, wait, wait Dr. Mimit Oz. Who the hell names their kid Mimit? Well, he's Turkish, apparently. 
So he's from Turkey. It must be a Turkish <sighs> name. Mimit. Because I did, thought they were did, saying Bennett. I mean, I did, like, did he was he living in the states and got and got K through twelve education in the states? I didn't read the whole biography. I just looked up oh his name. Oh my god! If, <laughs> if, if the the amount of abuse this kid would get on the playground. Hey, Mimit. <laughs> Mimit. Mimit. Come over here, Mimit. Give me a Mimit. <laughs> Hey, Mimit, give me a Mimit. Uh, maybe, it, maybe it drove him to be a doctor. All the, all the abuse. Holy smokes. Doctor. Yeah, kids he's, could be so cruel. He's a TV doctor. Wow, well, hey, you know. He is a heart surgeon. Uh, hey, he's a, he's a doctor. He's not, he's not Dr. Phil. Wait, no. Dr. Phil. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, Wait a minute. <laughs> if you're a douchebag, it's because you're if a If you think for one second that you should be coming on this program and airing out your problems... You're a big douchebag. <laughs> yeah, okay, Dr. Phil. Uh, here's another donut. Don't be afraid to uh, feed your face there, pal. Oh, well, there goes our sponsorship with Dr. Phil. Oh, my God. Yeah. Where did Oprah find that guy? Because I know that, that he he was under the Oprah's, uh, Oprah's production. Uh, right. He and Rachel Ray are both under the Oprah we production all know what umbrella. Happened to her. Well, Rachel's She's off TV now. Why? Well, not off broadcast TV, right? She doesn't have a show on ABC anymore, does she? Ah. Uh, does she have? Does she still have the Rachel? I Rachel? think she. I think I she still has the show. I haven't watched TV in a while. I thought that that show wasn't. No, there. I think she, Ellen is the one that's on, going to be out after this Ellen's year. Ellen's retiring. Well, she's out in more ways than one, but she's going to be <laughs> off the air, uh, in, in at the end of the year. Uh, but no, Rachel Ray is is still doing a show. Uh, Rachel Ray still doing a show, so I, it, you know, um, she was. I always liked the uh, what? What was the, the the Food Channel? What was what was the? That's what I thought she was on. Now, I well, thought. no, she's, she's she's got a syndicated show. Okay, uh, that's 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 on locally. My bad, Rachel. Yeah. So, um, but I always liked her. Um, what was it? Ten ten dollar a day or. Uh, uh, the show that she used to do on the food on the Food Network. It was, I think that's more of a U channel. I like the Food Network. There's a couple of a uh, couple of shows I'll oh, watch on the Food that Network. Looks tasty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, that was a nice Sean Connery thing. If you tried to uh, <laughs> tried to do that. <laughs> Oh Lord, three three zero eight eight six. I did. I, did, I the the diners, drive-ins, and, and dives. Yeah, was fun to watch. When when I lived in Springfield, uh, there did was you do a one locally. Yeah, there was a fifties joint that is incredible breakfast there, uh, and I think that they're they're only open until like two or three in the afternoon because they mainly just do breakfast. And you go into this place, and there's jute box. There's these records uh, that are taped and all over the place from uh, just iconic stars uh, with their with their records whether it's a 33 or a 45 uh, and you have a, a live jukebox that people can uh, can play uh, and just a really cool diner type an old school diner type we of went feel to, to this, it we went to this barbecue spot in Kansas City and the whole theme was like car cars car, yeah. like car shop and we're looking at, you know, they're, they're, they're like car parts hanging from the ceiling because it's all car. Interesting. Issues. And then we're sitting there eating and there's a tornado warning. And I'm looking around thinking this is the last place. Yeah, exactly. I want to be <laughs> in a tornado. Yeah, I want to rep I want to report some guy this, getting a carburetor stuck in his head. <laughs> this and Cracker Barrel are two places I would not want to be Oof. in a tornado warning because Cracker Barrel has all those like. Old school farm equipment stuff hanging on the walls. Not to mention you could the easily get impaled by. Yeah, not to mention the uh, the the stuff that they sell, the knickknack stuff, <laughs> um, and the rocking chairs that are outside. Well, that's fine. I mean, I'm not gonna. I mean, well, but, if, but, depending on where the wind blows, I don't want a rocking chair going by my head. Well, I'd rather a walking chair than like one of those old timey pitchforks. That's well, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want no part of that either. Uh, yeah. By the way, the the, the 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 stuff you can find at Cracker Barrel, I love it. Like the, oh, the jumbo size Hershey's bar that's like this. Cracker bar. Barrel is phenomenal. Not only is their food terrific, uh, uh, the, the stuff that you can get there is just absolutely phenomenal. Um, they, that was one of our. They have uh, all this old timey soda in the glass bottles, and you're yeah. like, "What bubble up? What the heck is this?" Yeah. 
oh, this is real sugar? Wait a minute. <laughs> not, the, not the stuff that, because uh, way back in the day, you had real sugar put in uh, the, the old that, Coca-Cola. And, and FYE, which is an entertainment store in most malls, has a bunch of Japanese imported stuff. Like they'll have Mountain Dew from Japan. I have two Japanese Mountain Dew cans. Have you? I collect Mountain Dew cans. Okay, hang on I'm a second. I'm not kidding. But have you drank the? I don't. I got two flavors, and I got the. I didn't drink them because I, I wanted them in my collection. Yeah, so but I you gotta, you gotta buy I one to drink. I haven't gone back yet to get one that I can drink, but I will. I mean, I, I gotta, know. I gotta, I gotta they're, know. They're, they're these like cute little cans too. They're like Japanese cans that are like this big. They're yeah. like eight ounce cans. It's like, mm. See, they don't. Um, one of the reasons why the Japanese people they are so orange f- Coke, orange, orange Pepsi. Yeah. From Japan, I'm like, orange Pepsi. I didn't try it, but I've never heard of that. I don't know how that would taste. I, I, I don't know. I'm kind of scared of orange. Pepsi. I, I don't. I don't know if I would like that or not. But one of the reasons why the the Japanese don't have much of a obese problem like we do in this country. Back it up at any time. Exactly. They don't. They don't go twenty ounce uh, bottles or sixteen ounce uh, uh, cans. They're they're going real real tiny stuff because you just no big gulps. In no 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 no. Yeah, uh, and you know that, that's that's how that works. So uh, I, I would be curious to. Try orange Pepsi. I just, I don't, I, I maybe, uh, don't think it could possibly work. But maybe I would, when I go to Kansas City, I'll get you some and I'll bring it along with my Gates barbecue sauce. You know that trip's coming up. Like, I go down there. Well, for the fly. listen, I go down there for the Fourth of July. Listen, so Gates, you, you are close to getting another bottle it, of Gates. Gates is uh, that's that's high quality <laughs> stuff right there. That is uh, that is some high quality <laughs> stuff because I. Um, I will go to various places because I'm a huge chicken uh, fan. I love love chicken, whether it's ch- wings or just boneless chicken. Give me some chicken, and I'll use the uh, the gate sauce. I just don't. I don't want any sauce on it. <laughs> well, you don't want any. No, no. The, and they kind of look at you, kind of side uh, <laughs> side glance, going, "The hell is this guy? You know, who would who would order just plain chicken? No, I have my stash. Thank you very much." And it's good, really, really good. Oh yeah. You start to you start to find out why people in Kansas City kind of turn their nose up at Casey Masterpiece. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I can understand that. Uh, Gates is that's strong. It's good. Uh, it's it's right up there with Corky's in Memphis. That um, this is one of my uh, favorite places. But uh, when I lived in Tennessee, my ex and I would go to Corky's. Uh, and and their barbecue is a little bit different than Kansas City, but th- their barbecue sauce. But Corky's it's probably bar- more sweet down there. Yes, tangy. A little yeah, bit. the Corky's barbecue sauce. I was just like, what kind of sorcery is this? I I, I can't believe this is it, this is really good. So when my family would come to visit, there were two things that we needed to do. Number one, we lived an hour outside of Elvis's place. So we'd have to go to Graceland. to Graceland, which is in a crappy neighborhood in Memphis, but it's it's still a really cool thing to do because the the tour of Graceland is phenomenal. I mean, it, it just is. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal tour, and that's the first thing that we would have to do. And the second thing is you got to go to Corky's because of the barbecue sauce. And the, and every time my family would eat this, they're like, "Why can't we have Corky's and it's Kroger?" Around the corner sells Corky's barbecue Ooh. sauce, and these people would be six, seven of them at a time taking them back uh, to Ohio. Okay, that's what we do. That's there. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I can understand why if you if you went to Kansas City mm-hmm. and you uh, you got Gates and and you sell Gates, uh, there I'm I'm taking a, a crap load of those home. And going back full circle, the Cracker Barrel. We stock up on Cracker Barrel syrup because it's different. And I don't care who, what, what anyone says. The little bottles of syrup that Cracker Barrel gives you yeah. are the best maple syrup you'll ever have in your life. Because uh, it's to... pure maple. Yeah. I mean, it's not like the, the Mrs. Butter's. Yeah, yeah. It's... I've been to Canada. They're, they're, their okay, syrup well, is crazy good. I've never been to good. Canada, but, but Cracker yeah. Barrel syrup. Mm. Yeah. And they come in little shot bottles. Yeah. Too. Now, here, and I think that we. Uh, especially if you're an Indians fan and you were at the old Cleveland Municipal Stadium 
the redeeming quality of Cleveland Municipal Stadium, despite the uh, the horrendous look of the building and the fact, the fact that, that you could die, uh, you you could pretty much die at any point in time, uh, and <laughs> you had to fun. and you had to pee where uh, pigs would normally uh, eat their food in a trough. Uh, the redeeming quality of Cleveland Municipal Stadium was the the stadium mustard out of this world, just out of this world crazy good. <laughs> the stadium mustard is ridiculously good. Now you go to uh, you go to some of the grocery stores in this area and they're selling the stadium mustard that a lot of us who went to the old Cleveland Municipal Stadium grew up on. Oh my God! It's the I, best thing in the world. I was expecting a food thing, but I was not expecting mustard. <laughs> Stadium mustard on a dog is the best thing in the world. Oh my God! It's the it's it took me back to like I'm a, a, a ten or eleven year old kid going we to that are, decrepit place. We are literally risking our lives sitting here, but the mustard is so good. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> it, it is. is. Worth it's, it. it's worth the ticket. <laughs> It's worth the price of admission. Give me two dogs and slather as much mustard on that as humanly possible. <laughs> it's worth it. Uh, it just it, don't do it on uh, on uh, ten cent beer night, which the uh, wait anniversary... mustard on hot dogs though. Yeah, like I've read, I'm, not a lot of people are a fan of mustard on hot dogs. Oh, if you mustard on if hamburgers, you get the stadium mustard. It's it's no, yeah. I'm not a big fan of mustard. It doesn't look right. It's like yellow and chunky. Okay, have you ever tried the stadium mustard? No. It's brown. Okay. It's not yellow. Ugh. Oh no. Trust That's even me. Harder. You would you would you would love the hell out of it. It's it's just that good. It really is. All right, we have a text from Kurt Seidel. Okay. Okay, and it's a mustard text. Okay. He says that Bertman's is the official mustard and the only mustard. I have family in other states I mail it to, so I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's that's that the guy mustard? that that's the guy that did the stadium okay. mustard. So he said it's the mustard and it's the only yeah, mustard. and it's it blows every other mustard out of the water. It is that good. It's spicy. It's tangy. It's oh my god! It's uh, on a hot dog. It's to die for. It's, it's just I have flashbacks. Literally, because you're going to a stadium. Yeah, because you're, you're <laughs> going to a you're going to a dilapidated dump. Uh, the, the mustard better be pretty good. Uh, yeah, but the, the the Indians were god awful. But by God, I'm going to go to the stadium to get a hot dog so I can put stadium mustard on it. <laughs> and they're sitting there. We're so bad. Why are people coming to our game? It's all about it's the, the mustard. mustard. That's it. Oh, okay. it's all about the mustard. It's fun. Same thing with the Browns games. And the Browns teams of the '70s were, especially in the mid late '70s. Oh my God, they were brutal. <laughs> Why are you going to the games? Gonna go get hot dog and get the stadium mustard. I'm guessing back then it was the only place you could get that mustard. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Could you could you say, hey, I want a cup of mustard? <laughs> no, no. That's, no they unfortunately, let you do that. unfortunately, they didn't let you do that. But the but the owner, the guy that was now was wise enough to say, well, maybe I should bottle this stuff and sell it in the grocery stores. Congratulations, you did. I brought it to my uh, when my aunt and uncle uh, were still alive in Orchard Park. They're like, oh, my God, this is incredible. I said, yeah, it comes from Cleveland Stadium. Uh, you know, it's the only good thing to come in from Cleveland <laughs> Stadium. But enjoy. <laughs> it almost made the drive worth it. <coughs> well, the it yeah, the hour and a half drive from, uh, from well, Daytona I'm in, I'm to Cleveland. Drive. No, yeah, 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 yeah. No, well, no. Our hearts are broken, we're, but we're, the mustard we're, was good. We're, we're not going to go that far. It wasn't that good. <laughs> It wasn't that good. I was sitting there watching that, just going, oh, boy. Yeah. There's was... no way this one will work. Okay, we're going to stop them here. Yeah. We're definitely going to stop them here. Oh, crap. We're not going to stop. <laughs> well, we'll win in overtime for sure. Yeah. We get the oh, ball first. Sure. Okay, game over. <laughs> we'll, we'll just do this. Fourth and a half a yard. Uh, go for it, Marty. No, we're going to punt. We, we trust our defense. Oh, there's a real good your call. Your defense just gave up yeah. a 99 yards. Yeah, your defense just gave up 98-yard drive. They won't do it again. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, they did. Newsflash, they did. <laughs> Poor Marty. <sighs> it's hard to speak ill of the dead, but he had a bad playoff record. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Unfortunately, he um, <sighs> he never got to what Andy Reid was able to do. Right, um, kick off the when, when Andy, but at least Andy's knock was he can't win a Super Bowl. I mean, yeah. he's getting there. Well, he, he had only gotten even, there one time with the Eagles, right. and then and he was getting the AFC and, championships, and, and then he and was doing the same thing, getting the championship. Marty never games. even won the playoff games. I mean, oh, he got to the championship he games, okay, and then he would gag. Cleveland. Okay, uh, his team would gag. So it's just it, you know, 
unfortunately, and and I, you know, look, I, mean, I I root for the Browns except when they play Buffalo. That defense, specifically <coughs> Dixon and Minifield, wasn't as good as advertised. It just wasn't. Elway was the Elway was just like, oh, I get to play these guys. Hey, I look forward to this. And he would carve them up all the time, especially the the uh, what was it the eighty seven game that was played in Denver. When Kozar and, and Biner went ballistic in the second half, they were down, what, 21-3 at halftime, and they got it tied at 31. I'm like, holy crap, this might happen. And Elway's like, oh, I get to play against these guys? Four plays, 80 yards. Yeah, I'm up 38-31. You're, you're tied. You're a move, Bernie. And then you get to the two-yard line and fumble. Yeah, it just is what it is. Yeah. I blame Webster Slaughter more than I blame Biner. Webster Slaughter that. whiffed on that block. Jeremiah Castile is probably best known in a mediocre career for doing what he did to Ernest Biner. But if Webster Slaughter had actually blocked him, he'd have a tie ball game, and then who knows what happens in overtime. Live up to your name, buddy. Slaughter the guy. Yeah, so... But everyone wanted to blame Biner, and I'm like, no. Well, yeah, because he's the one that fumbled. Well, he was the one that fumbled. He's gonna get the blame. And but without Biner, uh, this team isn't anywhere close to Denver in the second half of that game. Biner went nuts in the second half. He and he and Bernie both were. Oh my God, they were so good in the second but half. We did of better that game. than most. He blew. Yeah, yeah. He blew. Who he, blew it? Here's a mirror. You you blew it. Yeah. Except for the fact that Slaughter should have blocked Jeremiah Castillo. Well, hold on to the ball. Yeah. Well, he should have. <laughs> He should have. I blame I blame Biner for whiffing on the blitz that that killed Kozar's career. Yep. Uh, week one of the what was it, hey, the eighty eight or eighty nine season? Who sacked? That him? would have been Derek Thomas. Derek Thomas. And Derek Thomas just destroyed Kozar's elbow oh. to where he couldn't throw the ball deep anymore. No, I mean that was I think Derek Thomas's first year. No one really understood how good of an edge rusher that kid was going to. Yeah. Do. Oh my God. I have. Uh, my uncle knows someone that takes pictures on the field for mm-hmm. the Chiefs and he's doing it for – we have a, like a shot by shot by shot by shot by shot. It's like a long frame picture of Derek Thomas coming off the edge. His body is in such a ridiculous, almost parallel to the ground. You can't block this guy, and that's how he was so good. Yeah. I mean, he's coming off the edge like, like this. Hey, he's <laughs> real, real low to the ground. It's like how to uh, – Yeah. It's like he, Bruce Smith, Reggie White, they were all just so low to the ground, and you're like – there's nothing can't to block. block him. You, know? yeah, you can't block him. And then they could also go inside on you and fake that move. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, I blame Viner for that far more than uh, – I, I, I have no blame for him whatsoever. It's the same Neil in the Smith that stay game. in Kansas City. Oh, my gosh. I think if him and Derek Thomas go two more years, that would have maybe, been interesting. maybe they go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, it would have been interesting. And Neil Smith went and won it with Denver. Well, I, I'm still – That was a gut punch. Listen, I'm still convinced had Montana not gotten knocked out cold – in the championship game in Orchard game. Park. That would have been a great game. It was because Kansas City was up early on in right. against the Bills before Montana got his bell rung. Uh, and, and, you know, and I don't even remember who his backup was. That's how bad it was. Is uh, it Bono? I think it was. Yeah. Who Steve, played, who played like Sonny Bono uh, in the championship <laughs> game. Um, Steve Bono. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't good. It, it wasn't good. The, I was... 18 rows up, right if – I, if you drew a straight line – I was at that game. If you drew a straight line from where Montana was hit to the sideline to 18 rows up, I was right there. And I heard Montana's head hit the artificial turf at Ralph Wilson Stadium. I was like, oh, this guy's out. That's, <laughs> you don't get up from that. Not so, when you're that old. Yeah, that, that was uh, – I, I don't know if it was Bruce that hit him or – uh, one of the other one of the other guys. It might have been Tally on a blitz, but he got destroyed. I'm just like, well, he ain't getting up. This uh, this game's relatively speaking, it's over now because you take Montana point, out of this game. All you have to do is stop Marcus Allen from running the ball, and they did. That's so, all you have to do. Yeah, when, once Montana was out of the game, that was it was easy picking. That was the first year that Marty Schottenheimer won a game in Denver. That, yeah. that season in Monday Night Football. Yeah, and that was one that the, crazy comeback. One of the best Monday Night Football games ever. Yeah. Because it was, it was Elway versus Montana. Yep. And it was back and forth. And, and it and, lived up to the billing. And I think that, that was a call. 
I think I think uh, I forget who was doing my uh, football back then, but he called. Well, it was Al Michaels that was lived doing up it. to the billing. Yeah, Al Michaels was doing the games back then. And then I then. think his color was like, "Lord, take me now. I've seen it all." <laughs> that sounds like a Dan Deerdorf comment. I think it was. Lord, yeah. take me now. I've seen it all. All right, we're going to take a time out, and we will uh, update everyone as to uh, where we're going to be By tonight. The way, B-League. Coach Seidel also says that mustard is great on a hot pretzel. Yes, it is. So. Oh. You're speaking my language. <laughs> You're speaking my language, Coach. Uh, we're going to take a time out, give you the uh, B League schedule for tonight as we wrap this bad boy up. Stick around. Ah, the details. Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods is one fine ride. Perfect cornering, superb handling, sporty and stylish, power to spare, plus awesome mileage. Yeah, jaw-droppingly beautiful lines and well-appointed with luxurious trim. Put more oomph in your life and start beholding the molding. Find your home's fine hardwood at BairdBrothers.com. Planning a project around your home or rental property? Trust the electrical service to the local experts with 62 years of serving the Mahoning Valley. Joe Dickey Electric is your local go-to source for responsive, reliable, residential electrical work. From everyday maintenance and repairs to new installations, electrical upgrades, and safety inspections, no job is too big or too small. Call Joe Dickey Electric today, 800-549-3976, or visit DickeyElectric.com. That's DickeyElectric.com. For heating, cooling, and indoor air quality, the Mahoning Valley trusts MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning, offering worry-free repair, service, and installation. Call MP Vivo today for a free estimate. MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. We're your energy-efficient experts. If you're looking for a new Ford vehicle, why shop anywhere else but Tri-State Ford? Choose from our great selection of new Ford models. Plus, we've got you covered with our exclusive Tri-State Ford Advantage. It includes a 10-year, 200,000-mile warranty with your new Ford. Come see why so many customers from the Tri-State area buy their new Ford at Tri-State Ford. Customer focus, community driven. Tri-State Ford East Liverpool or visit TriStateFord.net. All right, here's our schedule for tonight before we make room for DJ and the fellas doing uh, the uh, power hour. Stick around for that. What's six, our schedule six for Six Class B games on the network tonight, five of them being 16U and 114U. On all three fields at Scene Park and the games at Scene 3 start at 5.30 and 8. The, the games at, on Scene 2 start at 5.30 and 8.15. And the games at Scene 1 start at 6 and 8.30. And we'll have Dom, Alec, Andy, and Jeff Betos all on calls at Scene Park. So tune in to Class B Baseball on YSN tonight. 16U's, 5 16U games, 114U. Also, the uh, Scrappers in action against the West Virginia Black Bears. Final game of that series before they move to uh, Frederick, Maryland to take on the Keys. Uh, that game starts at 7.05 tonight. All right, that'll do it for the show. Power Hour is coming up next. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. See ya.